down on the field. Todd? Well, Bob, in talking with Coach Art Browse of the University of Houston, he said this week, this year's Liberty Bowl is not a confirmation or reward that the University of Houston football is back on track. He said this year, this is a business trip. We are here to make a statement. We are here to build a program. His goal is to get the program back to where it was in the 60s and late 70s, even in the 80s when our Andre Ware was rocking the high flat top and grabbing Heisman trophies. This is where Houston wants to be. He says this is the first step, putting them back to where Houston football should be. Well, certainly dating ourselves when you talk about the high top fade that we saw some pictures of Andre Ware sporting and well, there's a chance he might join us a little bit later on guys to talk about it as South Carolina won the toss they elected to defer to the second half and Ryan Sucka bombs it deep in the end zone Vincent Marshall with no chance to bring it out so now let's take a look at the Houston offense. I'm Anthony Quick Six Aldrich here to introduce the University of Houston high speed offense led by quarterback Kevin Cobb, the general. Up front we have Sterling Doty representing the offensive line and at wide receiver we have Vincent Sweet P. Marshall is going down. Hey, Aldrich. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we get a chance a little bit later on. Quick Six Aldrich, we had a really oh, yeah. good heart. We had a great time with him putting those lineups together. He can fly. Now, there are certain players on this Houston offense that can fly even besides Allridge, although they start on the ground. The Jackie Battle, all 245 pounds of him up the middle for four yards. And now we hear who South Carolina sports on defense after the next play. At Kevin Cobb, though, he's such a field general. Brinkley and the guys on defense at South Carolina are expecting to pass. So interesting, the Cougars come out running the football. Coming out with the bruiser, too. Battle is a big fullback type runner downhill. Cobb with a spread set. Shotgun formation to the near side. And a couple of yards shy of the first down. On that completion to Avery as we check now the South Carolina defense. In the first South Carolina. Our defense today is led by our defensive line and our mean defensive end, Jordan Lindsay. Our linebacker core, which is very strong, is led by our middle linebacker, Jasper Brinkley. Our defensive backs will be led today by great cover corner, Fred Bennett. We're going to try to play on a great show today, make some big hits and a lot of plays. Hope you enjoy the game. Well, that play made by Byron Ely down the left sideline with a first down and then some. Third down and two turns into a big play for Houston. Great reaction by Cobb. He saw that the receiver in the slot was uncovered. Came out from under center. Just gave it to him right now and let him run, run the ball. And, and you know what? Ely is one of those guys that's a tall, lanky receiver. They have a lot of them in Houston. But it's the decision-making of Cobb that you're talking about, Doug. Getting the ball out in his hands. A big, tall, strong receiver breaks the arm tackle. Nobody, nobody covered down on him. Nobody slid out over the slot receiver. Cobb saw it right away. Got the ball snapped. Got it out of his hands and into the receiver's hands. Distribute the ball. Well, as you pointed out, Doug, the numbers that Cobb has put up this season are frightening. Last year, 19 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. This season, 27 touchdowns, only three interceptions. And we may be looking at a direct snap to Allrich. And it's a reverse. Trying to turn the corner is Vincent Marshall. And not a bad job by the South Carolina defense to string that play out and avoid a big play. Casper Brinkley made the stop. Marshall's one of the fastest players in the United States of America. And, and when you get the ball in his hands in space, you're going to see that Marshall knows to use the field. A lot of runners would stop and cut up field. He just outruns what appears to be at least containment. And now quickly down the sideline, easily a first down is Ely. We were wondering coming into this now if Houston could get away with this offense against an SEC opponent, a team with a lot of speed, which South Carolina has on defense, and they're walking it down the field just like maybe, usual. Maybe you were wondering. I had no doubt that you, you had no it. doubt. I thought you, okay. Go back and listen to the open, big fella. There you go. Two high scoring offenses. That a boy. <laughs> and now you can see as Cobb gets them set at the line, Cobb and the entire offensive line stood up and looked over towards our Riles on the sideline to get a play call. And here it comes on first and 10. Wide open towards the end zone. And an easy touchdown for Vincent Marshall. It couldn't get any easier for Houston than that. 
You know, he looks over to the sideline, Cobb looks over, they get the play. They're so relaxed in this offense because of the field general. Cobb is under control. He sees what's going on around the field, looks the safety off. Wide open down the seam. Marshall running right by him, Kirk. You know what? And it, it's just, it's it's poor play in the secondary. If you're going to let somebody run by you, you better have a safety over the top to help. There's no safety in the middle of the field. Marshall, with his speed, is a difference maker. It looked to me like the corner was playing man to man, and the defender over the slot thought it was zone. The extra point is good. We have barely played two minutes, and already Houston with a 7-0 lead. South Carolina to the offense. When we come back to Memphis, you're watching the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Barely not catching our breath at the AutoZone Liberty Bowl as Houston in two minutes and one second go 80 yards in five plays, and they have the 7-0 lead. Vincent Marshall already on the board, a 39-yard touchdown catch, and this is a quick strike team, guys. No doubt about it. They spread you out across the field. They get the ball out of the quarterback's hands. A lot of that has to do with his decision-making. He knows the offense so well. It's out in a hurry. He's got big play guys with it. You know, when you talk about under two minutes, there's the Houston Cougars with 23. I mean, I, this is an this is an offense. They ran the ball, had reverses on this series. I think they really put a lot of confusion and doubt and uncertainty in South Carolina's defense. Have we figured out what they call this offense yet? It, does it have a name to it? Go to the go to the go to the paint. <laughs> Get to the paint. All the paint again. The paint's that stuff down there in the end zone. Garrett Lefevre's kickoff coming down to Kenny McKinley at the five. He gets to the outside, picks up a block, and is just tripped up shy of the 40-yard line as we take another look at the touchdown. Going back to the touchdown, Houston spreads out South Carolina all the way across the field. The wide side corner is in press coverage, and it appears that everyone else is in zone coverage. As it rolls through, everyone else starts backing off. The linebackers drop. The safety's in the middle. But the wide side corner does not get deep enough to cushion the ball up the seam. And I think, I think a lot of that really comes into the mindset right now of South Carolina's defense. They've got to regroup on the sidelines right now and get ready for Kevin Cobb's offense. Three receivers and an eye set on first down. Blake Mitchell. That quarterback, and he goes to the air on first down. Dumps it over the middle, and picks up about eight yards as we check out after Leonard Stafford picks up the eight-yard gain. This South Carolina offense. South Carolina starting tight end. We have an offensive line that's led by our leader, Chris White. And also, we have an outstanding player in Sidney Rice, one of the best receivers in America. And today, we're hoping to put up some points and get on a great show. Boyd needs to take a lesson from Anthony Aldridge. <laughs> About a yard shy of a first down, Corey Boyd. Uh, he did an excellent Forward job. Forward progress job. out to the 49-yard line as Doug Flutie taking care already of somebody else's receivers. <laughs> now, South Carolina offensively, we're going to see a little different look. They're going to be a little more two back, run the ball in those draws, do some play action, more of a conventional pro-style offense. I like... Corey Boyd. He's a downfield runner, downhill. Very seldom you see him going backwards when he's getting tackled. I mean, he's a strong runner with great vision. He does have a cast on his hand today. He banged that hand up against Clemson. And uh, we'll see if it hurts him carrying the ball at all if it pops loose. Forward progress for Boyd. Gave him a first down. And he is brought down just into Houston territory. A gain of two. And here's the Houston defense. How you doing? I'm Mark Ray Love, the anchor of the Mad Dog defense, bringing the hate, spreading the love. At outside linebacker, we got Wade Cole, number one, the long hair hippie. Don't let the long hair fool you because he will do you. At free safety, we got Will Dudley, the X Factor, coming down here knocking boys' heads off. <laughs> <laughs> he will do you. We really have to get some ESPN people down here to get these guys to come out of their shells when we ask them to do this stuff. Screen to the near side. And Corey Boyd, very close to a first down. At the 41-yard yard line of Houston, brought down by Kenneth Fontenet. And he looks to be right at the first down marker. It is so much fun, though, watching these young men do the lineups. You get to see the personalities. And, and in the meeting rooms, when you watch them do it, it's hilarious because they're oh, it nervous. Was, it's hard. It was awesome. I'll tell you what, when Aldridge started, Anthony started going in, and he was getting down on himself. We're all in the room. It was a blast. I'll tell you what, meeting, being at the games and meeting these kids is what it's all about. A little bit later on, we'll show you some of the best of Anthony Aldridge. <laughs> he was as entertaining as could be. He already has a best of album out, huh? <laughs> That's right. 
Rice goes to the wide side. First and ten. Back to the ground, though, and Mike Davis gets the corner. He's at the 20. Finally brought down at the 16-yard line. Davis had two touchdowns and 94 yards in the Florida game this year that South Carolina almost pulled out. Watch to the right side, the zone stretch, and the linemen all matching up. There's a huge hole here. The receiver's downfield. The linebacker has got the field from the inside out, and South Carolina now twice in a row has uh, confused Houston's defense. Now they're gashing. They were physical against Clemson. We saw them run the ball extremely well against Clemson. They're picking up where they left off. Gamecocks this year, 56% touchdowns in the red zone. 48 trips and 27 scores. First and 10 at the 16. Mitchell with an empty backfield. Under some pressure, and he will be dropped. Sacked by Phillip Hunt. The old ball coach goes from his two back sets to an empty set, spread them out, drop back pass. This time, the Houston defense gets to him. But I think Spurrier would take this. This is a good no decision by Mitchell. Don't force the ball down on first and ten. You're in the red zone. Leave it be. Go back to second and long. Give yourself a chance to come back and go after it. Eighth sack of the season for Phillip Hunt. He leads this Houston defense. And now down a distance that the defensive coordinator is a bigger fan of. Second and 13. We have had fireworks already in the opening moments here in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Flag slot. Delay of game. Mitchell tried to change the play just at the end of the play clock and could not get the snap off. Final snap. Eleven game on the offense. Number 12. Five-yard penalty. Main second down. Sounds like the wind's blowing a little bit down there, doesn't it? It seems like a beautiful day up here. That's Frank White. We were talking to him for the game. He lives over in Hawaii. Makes the trip back to the mainland to do a little football. This is the dead of winter for him. It's 40, about 65 degrees here in Memphis. Frank needs a coat. It's a beautiful day, but the wind is blowing down there. Gusting up to about 25 miles per hour. That's Sidney Rice up there. At some point, he's going to get in this ball game. Second and 18. Mitchell. Looking for Rice in the end zone. Jump there. Incomplete. What a wrestling match that was. Great coverage by Will Gulley. The Conference USA first team selection. I'll tell you what, Will Gulley was on the half field there, locked up one on one. Once he gets through, it's a two deep safety look. Now he's one on one with the safety. The ball's up for grabs. Gully undercuts it and does a great job. It almost comes up with a pick. It's a bad throw by Mitchell because th this is a touchdown and the ball's thrown to the back of the end zone. And the only reason Gully can deal with this right here is because he too is at about six foot four inches. Both these are tall receivers and defensive back from head on head. Third down and 18. The ball all the way back now, close to the 25 yard line. Play stopped again at the line. And a timeout was called. A timeout called by South Carolina with 9.04 to go in the first quarter. 7 0. Houston with an early lead. Steve Spurrier, gentlemen, not that pleased on the South Carolina sideline. Well, Spurrier is a good football coach. He's trying to teach Blake Mitchell right now. What are you thinking there? He's always teaching, and he says this year Mitchell's gotten a lot better at understanding what he's trying to accomplish and getting the ball, especially with a guy like Sidney Rice with the matchups that he wants. Well, South Carolina got all the way down to the 16-yard line, took a delay of game, now had to burn a timeout, end a sack. It's third and 18. Mitchell looking to scramble and gives himself up. Got back to the original line of scrimmage. A gain of eight, and it will be fourth down. Just a nice nice decision to get what you can, get down, get your better field goal range. Houston bailed out in zone. They've been playing all zone coverage, Houston. They're afraid of the speed of receiver. They don't want to get locked up one-on-one. -on -one. Field goal range. And now a kicker in Ryan Suckup. There's a very good chance you're looking at a future winner of the Lou Groza Award, as he has never missed under 45 yards, 10 for 10 in his career. This one, a 33-yarder to try and get South Carolina on the board. 15 of 18 overall this year. And Suckup missed it to the right. Yep. Off 
for the Houston faithful watching. Could I have done a better job of jinxing I was gonna say, He put the whammy on me. He's taking right over for John, isn't he? He put the whammy <laughs> Way to go, Bob. Fans. Way to go. Booker fans, I will continue to do all I can this afternoon. 7 up. It's on Liberty Bowl. Approaching the midway point of the first quarter. Houston with a 7 0 lead over South Carolina. And the Cougars with a two minute and one second scoring drive to open the game up. Now have the football back after the first career miss under 45 yards by Ryan Suckup. And back to the air goes Cobb. Instead, he'll tuck it under and keep it. Very dangerous quarterback on the ground as well. Jasper Brinkley brings him down after about a seven-yard game. He was hoping to get a one-on-one -on -one matchup out there with uh, Aldridge up the sideline on a wheel route. He ran a Banged wheel up, up, the, up the up the sideline, got banged wide. It didn't happen for him. Cobb again, no negative play. <laughs> and Tempo, look at him at the line of scrimmage. Second down and three. Three receivers in the gun. And it's a trap handoff. Not much there. Jackie Battle brought down behind the line. Kevin Cobb's favorite target, though, is Vincent Marshall, and Todd Harris has more on him. Jackie Battle on the carry for the Cougars. Bob, at 5'7", only 130 pounds, Vincent Marshall's desire to walk out as a football player at Houston were met with resistance, so he took a track scholarship instead and was asked to play fullback on the scout team. That was under head coach Dana Dimble, but when Coach Bryles came to Houston, he found Marshall and put him at wide receiver. Now, Coach Bryles must have seen some hidden talent because this year Marshall became Houston's all-time leader in reception and yards and the Conference USA Championship game MVP. But the bad news is for the South Carolina Gamecocks, Anthony Allridge is even faster. Aldridge calls himself quick six. This will be a quick sack. Jasper Brinkley brings down Cobb. A loss of four. And three downs and out goes Houston. It really all starts with Marshall in the slot over to the left. You'll see him here. That's where Cobb wants to go with the ball. And this is excellent defense by South Carolina. Many times you'll see the Cougars, when they run that play, Doug, they do have the open receiver in the slot. It's just like a little toss sweep. So they, Brinkley did a great job, actually, of scraping as a linebacker, mirroring the quarterback, getting outside contain and containing the quarterback himself. Did you think they were going to go three on 11 out there at that, I, at that moment with a punt? I didn't know what they were going to do. With. Well, they're set with about seven on the play clock. And Justin Laird gets away a wobbly kick. Returnable for Kenny McKinley. And McKinley is ear hold at about the 49-yard line. Nice tackle made by Roy Otis, reserve fullback. 5.54 to go in the opening quarter. We're in Memphis. There have been some fireworks early in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. To ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. That is Capital One Bowl Week visits Memphis. When you are here, you have to spend some time at Graceland. Elvis just still permeates this entire city and South Carolina's team. Took us up on that. They went out to Graceland. Steve Spurrier's son went out, took a look at the King, and I think Craig James actually has that out. He does. I home. saw it yesterday. Right? Yeah, I got that one right there. <laughs> <laughs> I got the burns. I got the glasses. Well, the Gamecocks have the football back with great field position, just shy of midfield. To the ground, staying on his feet and getting to the outside. This Corey Boyd with a first down. Took the initial contact and picked up 15 yards. You know what, I mentioned Boyd earlier about the strength that he has and how strong he is. Watch Gully, the free safety, come up in the hole. Safety makes the hit. you got to wrap up. This isn't a guy that's lightweight in the bridges. <laughs> he had to transfer the ball from right to left, put it in that cast. He's got some broken bones in there, a couple screws in that left hand. We'll see if he has to carry the ball in the left Phillips hand. Phillips head or more. flathead? Yeah, I think they're Phillips. Okay. <laughs> First and 10 at the 34 of the Cougars. White side on an inside handoff. And ran a long way to pick up a couple of yards. Coming up next at 8 Eastern here on ESPN, Capital One Bowl Week continues as two schools meet on the gridiron for the first time ever. Curtis Painter and the Purdue Boilermakers take on Sam Hollenbach and Maryland. The Champs Sports Bowl coming up next at 8 Eastern, also available on ESPN HD and ESPN Radio. There could be some offensive numbers put up in that game. Hey, Painter's going after my boy Drew Brees' record. He needs 263 today. We hope he gets 262. 
<laughs> second down at eight. That's the in, Big Ten record. The Big Ten. Corey Boyd, the tailback in motion. Over the middle, a high throw floated over the top of Stafford and incomplete. It will be third down and eight. Well, they gave him the same look in those two deep zone coverages they've been playing defensively, but this was a man-to-man -man underneath, so they locked on the back, and the easy check down wasn't there. You know what? I, it, it seems like that Mitchell, he either really recognizes coverage, steps in the pocket, and delivers, or he doesn't see the game, and he doesn't really have a feel for his check downs. You know, it, it just... It can't, consistency is what you're looking for. Now, let me tell you how you get consistent. That would be wide left. That would be number four. Right now, that's the bottom <laughs> of the screen. If you find him several times a game, you're going to be consistent. Rice has been quiet so far. Third down and eight. Houston show blitz for a moment. They rush only four. Mitchell trying to buy some time. Looking towards Rice. Rice was going to come back and help him for a moment. Instead, Mitchell scrambles and literally gets right to the first down marker. A gain of eight. It depends on the spot. Boy, he got on the perimeter there with the, with the scramble. Blake got outside, and I really was kind of hoping he'd pull up and just hang in there and wait for Rice to work back to him down the sideline. He made the decision to run, went full tilt. He's right at the first down mark. But you know how hard it is when you're going beyond full tilt to pull up and try to throw the football? Well, that's Come everything on. he's got. Well, not everybody won the high trophy okay, like you, yeah, okay? That's right. That's not right. everybody that's can throw it, you know, and lift Not everybody can be 5'10". Come either. on. He's 6'4". Throw the ball. And not everybody can go to Boston College. Let's keep that in mind <laughs> yeah. as well. Both right? of you guys. Oh, yeah. Gee. First and 10 we'll without a measurement. It. Where's my Western Michigan buddy Saunders? <laughs> Mitchell is given the first down. <laughs> and back to the ground at Corey Boyd. And Boyd again runs through a tackle. And moves the pile down close to the 16-yard line. A gain of eight. He's a load. This, this offensive line has been together now for five straight games. They finally settled on the right five guys up front. They're getting it done. They're even getting help from the wide receivers. They're getting inside the 17. Brown's locked on. He's got his hands in. As long as they're inside the frame, he's good to go. You know, I, I think you need to figure out right now, don't try to strip the ball. He can hold on to it. You better get down to these fives. Second down and a long two. And again, the play clock down inside of 10 as Mitchell barks out signals at the line. Once again, it's to the ground. This is Mike Davis. He has a first down. Stays on his feet, and he's to the five. Well, these South Carolina running backs do an amazing job of running through the initial contact. He, he's running the darkness, though. He's looking for the contact. He's not running to, lay, to daylight. He's putting his head down looking for it. He's a heat seeker. He's running to darkness? Running to darkness. Instead of okay. running to daylight and making a miss, he keeps just running over. He's doing the bear call. You know, you heard that drill that the coaches made us do that never made sense. He never did it in a football look game. At him, look at him finish off on the ground right here. Even if he's finally tackled, yeah. he's still running. He's, he's still. He's a, he's a root hog. Root hog. Is that what it is? Yeah, something like that. First and goal at the five. The lone wide out is Rice. Instead, it's Davis on a toss. And he is brought down at the five. At the thighs. Will Gully made the stop. Man, what a nice job of Gully coming up. He says he's one of the mad dog defensive leaders. Gaston's a little, Willie Gaston's a little confused on the coverage here, guys. Give me a call, give me a hand signal, something. Well, especially covering Rice, you better know something before they snap the football. Well, he wants to know whether he should be inside technique or outside. Hopefully he's outside and has inside help because he doesn't want to be one-on-one -on -one out there. When you're in the press box as the D coordinator and you see your cornerback doing that and Rice is standing three yards away from him, how do you feel? <laughs> Not too good. Second and goal at the five. Again, Rice is the wide man at the top of your screen, number four. He has put up scary numbers through his first couple of seasons. Instead up the middle, taking on initial contact and grinding his way down to about the two is Mike Davis. Philip Hunt and Ernest Miller combined to save the touchdown. Now it's third and goal. Pre-game, we're on the field. Doug and I are visiting with Steve Spurrier. We're really watching Corey Boyd, and we're saying, man, Boyd's a heck of a runner. He said, hey, so is Mike Davis. He said, 25 is a heck of a player. I got two guys who can take the mayor. And he's proven it today. He's, they're just alternating. It doesn't matter who's in there. Boyd's back. It's Corey Boyd back in. Ninth play of the drive coming up. Third down and goal just outside the one. And an easy touchdown on the toss for Corey Boyd. 
boy, it is a statement when you walk into the end zone that easily. It is a statement to the, the guys up front and the fullback that he's blocking. There you go, Leonard Stafford, 39 with a kick out block. There you go. You even the pony, line. even the pony could still try through that one. All right, I think, well, yes, I could. I could have run through this one here, but Stafford, 39 with a kick out block. Beautiful. They log the inside pursuit. Excellent drive by South Carolina. Ryan sucked up is excellent at extra points as well. <laughs> oh, he made it. Okay, good. That feels better. <laughs> Tied at seven. Two on nine to go in the first quarter, and maybe it's not me. Who called for a shootout today here, Mr. Well, extracurricular talking for the English language on the field. Flag down right at the end of the extra point try. Touchdown is good. A dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 34. That will be administered on the kickoff. Well, that might affect field position, guys. That's going to march South Carolina back to about their own 20-yard line to kick off. I don't, I don't get it. I, I really don't get the unsportsmanlike conduct penalties all the time. And the kids, you know, when they score the touchdown, the extra celebration, or taking a hunt, they know the rules of the game. And your pet peeve of the year has been not to, you know, not to dive with the ball extended out in front of you. I mean, you just you play the game, you get in the end zone, you go back to the bed, you play with emotion. You definitely play with emotion. In fact, Nathan Pepper for South Carolina, what a disciplinarian Steve Spurrier is. Last uh, game against Clemson, Nathan Pepper intercepts the ball, runs for a touchdown. He's trot in the last five yards, caught from behind, strip, fumble out of the end zone. He sat, he's sitting in the first quarter today. He's not starting as a discipline. He'll never do it again. Well, if there was a playoff system in college football, South Carolina would be a team you wouldn't want to see. As we take a look at their schedule this season, five losses. Every team they lost to was ranked in the top 25 at the time they played them. And boy, Florida was the toughest schedule in the nation at least opponents win percentage they just about lost to South Carolina I'll tell you what they were within seven points of every, every opponent they lost the 18 nothing game to Georgia where their offenses didn't get it done but other than that they had played well in every game they play these top teams tough and I mean we saw how physical they were against Clemson they're, they're just a player or two shy difference makers of getting them off the field or converting for touchdowns. But there's not far away from turning this into an eight and nine win consistent season if they can do it in South Carolina. The, 15 -yard penalty step the officials, when they originally made the call, signaled that it was against South Carolina. It turns out they've gotten things straightened out and it actually was called against the Houston Cougars. So this is just about signing Houston up for taking the ball at their own 20-yard line is now Ryan Suckup's going to be able to kick the ball from midfield. You're thinking it, aren't you? So Steve did take care of his no, guys. No, you're thinking it right now, though. Oh, the onside kick? You're thinking it, right? What am I thinking? Yeah, onside kick. Oh, yeah. It's Steve Spurrier. Well, some type of pooch, something. You don't just blast it through the uprights, do you? I guess you do. There's a go through, but see if he makes it. That's a good point for him. Wide right. If you, if you kick the ball through the extra points, look, they're field goal. They called uprights. Uprights. <laughs> First game I've been to. They should <laughs> get points. Kicking an oblong ball through a big H. <laughs> <laughs> Are you smart, Alec. I'll get you. It's a long game. Coming to America. <laughs> 158 to go in the first quarter, and there's a good chance I'll be up here in a two-man booth or maybe by myself before we're done. We're tied at seven, and now back to work goes Kevin Cobb. The Conference USA Offensive Player of the Year, a unanimous selection. And here's Anthony Allridge. It's rare that Allridge is only able to pick up a few yards. That a three-yard gain in Capital One Bowl Week continues on ESPN tomorrow afternoon. A pair of games. First and 430 Eastern, Colt McCoy and 18th ranked Texas takes on Drew Tate and Iowa in the Alamo Bowl. And then at 8 Eastern, it's Matt Stafford leading Georgia against Virginia Tech's notable defense. And Brandon Horry's running prowess in the Chick-fil-A Bowl. So a pair of games tomorrow, Capital One Bowl Week. The ball spotted at the 20. You see, though, the tempo that, that this offense has. They're always putting pressure on the defense, and they're trying to get the ball in a guy like Marshall's hands in open space. Again, he was uncovered off the snap of the ball. South Carolina's got to get lined up a little quicker. Third down and four as Marshall is about to come off the field, then heads right back into Houston's other. And this is a great atmosphere here. Literally, there are half the stadium taken up by South Carolina fans, a half 
taken up by Houston fans. So on third down and a long three, all of the South Carolina fans making noise until Houston picks up the first down as Aldridge gets out across the 30 to the 31 and picks up. This guy they've ever seen in pass. And you see it. Look at it. It's amazing. We see, he averages over 10 yards a carry. It's 10.6 yards per carry. And we've seen it on film. I mean, he pulls it with nobody who's going to catch him. He leads the nation in yards per carry. In this season, he had seven different carries during the year of 30 or more yards and three touchdown runs that went at least 77 yards. Spread set. Cobb looks downfield under pressure. And he'll go down. Back at the 31-yard line, Casper Brinkley with the sack. Sacks near the 30-yard line by number 51, Casper Brinkley. Casper, the twin brother of Jasper, the middle linebacker, they came over together. So you, I think after the scuff, I think must have reached the ground and got a hold. There it goes, dragging him down, gets another sack. That's his sixth in the season. And they hope the next year have a chance to stand him up as a stand-up linebacker. Pretty good uh, first quarter, huh, guys? That will take us to the end of the first quarter. Well, there were some fireworks, and we are tied at seven. South Carolina and Houston in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl from Memphis. Both fans with plenty to cheer about through the opening 15 minutes. It's been a fun game so far. Capital One Bowl Week continues from here in Memphis. Houston looking for their seventh consecutive win. South Carolina looking for their third consecutive win and their first bowl win under Steve Spurrier. We'll return to Memphis in a moment. Welcome back to Memphis. It's the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. We're tied at seven, set for the start of the second quarter. I'm Bob Wachusen, in for John Saunders, alongside Doug Flutie, Craig James, Todd Harris with us as well. And Houston faced with second down and 11. Cobb to the near sideline, trying to tippy-toe his way. And looking like he did exactly that. A nice catch by Jerron Harvey, close to a first down. And guys, we have seen the best of both of these offenses for the first quarter or so. Houston came out slinging it right down the field like there was nothing to it, like they've done it every week. And then uh, South Carolina turns around and they're running the... I think Houston football. needs to get some running game going here. They don't have that on the ground right now. Uh, the little short control passes to the flats is what they're working with. But I think they really need to establish some semblance of a running game. Great tempo to this Cougar offense. Faced with third down and two now at their own 40-yard line. Vincent Marshall with the touchdown catch in motion. He takes the wide receiver hitch and almost got free. Did well just to reach the ball out to the sticks. Captain Munnerlin, a true freshman, may have saved a touchdown with that tackle. I, I'll tell you what, this was all out blitz by South Carolina. They were they were stocking it up there for the run. They, they had a Houston had a running play called. Cobb pulled away from the run, threw the quick hitch out there as a reaction to the blitz, as a blitz control. We asked Kevin Cobb yesterday what difference he's felt over the years in the offense here, and he said, I've done it seven years now, dating back through high school. So he said, you know, it's one of those offenses, I understand what's out there and how to run, to run it. And like you said there, here's an option of a run or a pass. He takes the, the flat route that gets on the first down. Again, they go empty. Cobb pumps, looks deep over the middle for Marshall. And he just couldn't quite run under it. That is Cobb's first incompletion. Seven of eight for 85 yards and a touchdown. Like I said, we can't do that in practice. Well, the thing, the thing you can't really coach up is vision. Here's Vincent Marshall outside, and, and they have him bracketed with a linebacker, Brinkley. Cobb bought just a little extra time with his feet and almost pulled off a touchdown. Gave him a chance to do a little double move, a little slanting up. And South Carolina is not afraid to go man-to-man -to -man against Houston. They played man-to-man the, -man the whole game so far. Second down and 10, a quick pitch to the near side left, trying to turn the corner, and getting pushed out of bounds was Anthony Aldridge after a gain of four, so it'll be third down at six. With Aldridge's speed, how'd you like to be a pulling guard in front of him? I mean, that's almost a waste of time. You know, you're asking you're asking a Maserati or a Ferrari or something just to, to go like a Pinto for a while. And when you got a situation, just turn it up quick, look for somebody from inside and seal something off, because you're not going to outrun them to the corner. Aldridge. Didn't always play running back. And he's thought of more of, of as a receiver, and eventually they moved him to back just to get the ball in his hands because he's so explosive, and he certainly made that pay off. Four receivers, design rollout on third down and six. To the sideline, making the catch is Avery. 
and he gets tripped up or he might have gone the distance. That's a touchdown saving ca uh, tackle by Bennett. I'll tell you what, this is all out blitz again by moving the pocket. They buy a fraction of a second and I, this, this was a fraction from going the other way. But watch here as Avery squats and sets and it shows you the arm strength of Cobb, right? You know what? It, because if head ball's not thrown with crispness, it's an interception going the other way. Shoestring tackle there, everybody. Carlos Thomas gambled and went for the pick. A gain of 16, first and 10. Shovel pass and some running room. Here's Marshall inside the 30. Run out at about the 26-yard line for a gain of nearly 12 yards. And another Cougar first down. We asked the Cougars offensive players if they had a playbook. They said, no, we just go, we just go <laughs> we to practice, just, and we draw it up, and kind of go, that right there is creative. That was a heck of a play. Nice little shovel pass, little hit screens, little of everything. They really don't have a solidified playbook that they pass out to the players. They say, we just run them in practice. Oh, look at this one. Mm -hmm. Four players all to the bottom of your screen. Wide right, Donnie Avery. He's the lone wide out at the top and that's what Cobb wanted to go at first and instead checks down to Perry McDaniel nothing there well you mentioned seven years in this offense for Kevin Cobb he told us the benefit of exactly that make it a little harder you overthink things you know and, and and being in the same system for seven years you can imagine I overthought a lot of things and so it's finally taken me this long it, it may have hurt me honestly to to start the the system in high school because I just thought man I just got to keep learning keep learning well you know, the play is simple from the very beginning. Just let it be, it, be itself and, and get it to the right player. It's an interesting perspective. Almost hard to deal with the same system for seven years because he thinks so much. Play action. Second down and long. And the ball knocked down at the line and intercepted. Picked up by Jordan Lindsay. What a great play by Lindsay. Lindsay just reaches up and snatches it out of the air. He had the underneath route coming across. First interception the Cobb's thrown in the last 131 attempts. And it wasn't necessarily one of those that you would think would be a traditional interception. But Lindsay's a big play guy that comes up big for South Carolina. Just a huge play for South Carolina. And Cobb doesn't make bad decisions. This is not a bad decision interception. He's had he, all his interceptions this year have been off his receiver's hands or ball that got batted in the air. And in this case, a defensive end reaching up. Gets what a bump starts up. He gives himself separation from the blocker and reaches up and snatches. But he also knew what zone, where that passing lane was going to be, and that's why Lindsey made the interception. Cobb now with four interceptions on the season and about 400 attempts. Looking for Rice deep downfield and finding him is Blake Mitchell. The first big play of the game made by Sidney Rice. You knew it was coming. Out of bounds at the Houston 26-yard line. That's a 53-yard game. Get a turnover, go for the throw. They've been running the ball well. First play after the turnover. Play action. Set your feet and hit Rice on the corner round. The, the wide side corner settled his feet just for an instant. Didn't give enough cushion to get back on the throw. Safe to better get over there. Ask Sidney Rice why he was better this year than last year. And he says, I'm just stronger. You know, I'm tough. Kind of like you. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm stronger at the dental table than I've ever been, but. Well, Rice now well over 2,100 yards receiving for his career. Mitchell again going for Rice in the end zone. Knocked away. Coverage underneath from Willie Gaston. Just a great release by Rice. He's five to six yards behind the defender. And the ball, the ball was just a fraction late or way on the throne. One twice. or the other. That's twice now See ya. that Rice has been open for a touchdown and the ball has been underthrown. The Cougars have got to figure out to get back. Or Mitchell's got to figure out to let the ball go. For Gaston, that's the 45th Pretty time he has broken a pass up. <laughs> He's number one all time for the Cougars in passes defense. Second down and 10 at the 26. This time the handoff, Mike Davis. Down to about the 21. The ball came out late. And boy, oh boy, did <laughs> Jamal Meredith lay a hit on <laughs> poor Ernest Mitchell, who was silly enough to pick up the loose ball. Well, he paid for it, probably hoping the whistle sounded a little earlier. And down Best goes um, down goes Frazier. Steve Burks. It was down Steve Burks. Burks taking the blow. I tell you what, this is the best tackle by an offensive lineman that didn't count. <laughs> that was a pancake. Third down and six after a four-yard game for Davis. He is down. That was not a fumble. Rice.
race to the short side of the field at the top of your screen. Now joined by Kenny McKinley. Mitchell steps up, fires a bullet up the seam, and it's caught by Rice at the 10. First down, South Carolina, Ernest Mitchell, Ernest Miller, pardon me, made the stop. The discipline that Sidney Rice has on this route shows that he's just not a vertical player. He sets and squats right in the middle of the zone and doesn't run outside of the opening. Gives himself a nice target for the quarterback, and the quarterback can stick it on him instead of leading them into, into trouble across the field. Nice job by Rice. Making an easy throw for his quarterback. We like that. You know, all receiver running backs do is try to make quarterbacks. That's look all they good. should do. You That's get, you all know, they should do. That bling bling you got on your finger, that Heisman <laughs> ring you've carried around Memphis, Tennessee all week. <laughs> How about this guy? First and ten at the 12. Again, Mitchell to the air. Checks down to his back. Stafford tries to pull his way into the end zone. He's brought down at the one. Bernard Stafford, who is a junior and has never carried the football in three years at South Carolina. That close to glory, and now looks like somebody else is going to get the highlight. That's because he looks like he should be playing right guard. But he catches the ball out of the backfield on these checkdowns for his zone, and he's getting good yardage, and that time always found himself in the end zone. He is a bull. Four minutes gone by here in the second quarter, and it's first and goal inside the one. The tailback is Mike Davis. Play action. Mitchell, wide open, back of the end zone, an easy touchdown for Robert Pavlovic. <laughs> and the Gamecocks take the lead for the first time. Pavlovic is not necessarily the guy that you would think of is going to run the routes. We saw him doing pat and go before the game, and... He and the rest of these other big tight ends, they, uh... He runs the route, right? He's wide open. No one covered him, but he went up to his depth, turned, cut, broke, ran it. Very textbook route. Hey, you're wide open. No one's covering you. Just turn around and look for the ball. <laughs> First touchdown of the season for Pavlovic. And a ball off the uprights. No good from Suckup. What are you I didn't doing? say anything. Before he oh. kicked that one, I said nothing. I don't know if I should be blamed for that one. Ryan Suckup is now one for three on kicks today, including a missed extra point. So South Carolina has to settle for a six-point lead. As Mitchell executes the old ball coach's play call perfectly. Big James and Doug Flutie, I think, with all due respect, even to the national championship game, that might end up being the best bowl game of the season. Those are two great teams. Oh, they are. Two physical teams that have probably, between the two of them, the best receivers in the country on the field. Well, Ryan Suckup, I think, was a little angry. <laughs> Based on his performance so far, he leaned into that one and buried it in the back of the end zone. No chance for Marshall. So the ball comes out to the 20-yard line for Houston, now trailing by six. It didn't go through the big eight. You tell you to get no extra points. No. Don't you think that'd be a good rule, though? That'd be a it great add, rule. I'd love a it. Twist. I love it. You played in Canada where I you guys it. got to move before the snap. It's a single, that's a single point in Canada. Actually, it's not on kickoffs, just punts. Just punts? Yes. Punts and field goals. If he fields it and downs it, it's a punt. What? <laughs> I'll, I'll throw you in. Look, if the, if the returning back were to down it, it would be a point. But if it goes through on the kickoff, there's no point. Of Don't course. Now well, that makes sense. First and 10 from the 20 yard line for Kevin Cobb. He has been just about perfect today. And again, looking for a big play to Marshall. Incomplete. Nice coverage. Nice coverage on the play. Running stride to stride. Bennett's just the best cover corner. Bennett has nine interceptions. He's one of the best corners in the SEC. And I'm very impressed with Bennett's ability to turn and run because we all know that Marshall's got a lot of speed. How about Fred Bennett, the only returning starter for South Carolina on defense from last year to this year? And they're really the strength of their team this year has been their defense. Yeah, they've only allowed 17 points a game with that tough SEC schedule. It's pretty impressive. Here comes quick six, Anthony Allridge, and he is upended after picking up nine yards. Emmanuel Cook came up with a nice open field tackle. And, and you know what? This is an example of Allridge not being a running back. He's just getting out there going fast, using his speed, because if he were a running back, he would know he's got inside out coming from the free safety, and with that kind of speed, could cut back and make that guy miss from the free safety spot. Sometimes you're going a little too full speed. Third down and one, a keeper. And this depends on the spot. I'm not sure he got to the 30-yard line. 
Every drive so far for Houston has started at the 20 yard line. This is their fifth possession of the game, and he didn't get there. It'll be fourth down and a half yard, just shy of the 30. That is a great stop by South Carolina. You, you have to punt the ball. In our conversations with Coach Bryles, he said sometimes you gotta go with your gut. Remember that? He said, hey, sometimes, you know, coaching's about instincts, it's about gut feel. Maybe his gut's telling him right there, we gotta get the, the first down and not punt it back. Fourth down and a half yard at their own 30-yard line. Houston thought about going for it, and that got Paul's timeout. You know, he had, okay, sends the team out there, try to go on offside, see if we can get a cheap first down here, otherwise we'll punt the ball. But he had an open gap there that maybe if they had run the quarterback sneak again, he would have blasted right through and got it easy. Well, we'll see if the punting unit for the Cougars comes out when we return. 9-18 to go before halftime. Full night for football here in Memphis. South Carolina with a 13-7 lead, 9-18 to go before halftime. And it turns out that Art Riles was not bluffing. They weren't just trying to draw South Carolina off offsides. It's fourth down and a half yard for the Cougars at their own 30-yard line. And off the timeout, they come back out to go for it, run a play, and they pick it up. Absolutely. Right up the middle goes battle for the first down. Love it. Got over the ball in a hurry. Quick snap and just lay it up in there. I'll tell you what, they got a good downhill runner to run the short yardage first. And this is a situation where Art Bryle says he just trusts himself. I think sometimes you got to go with your uh, your gut more than you do your uh, intelligence. And, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But, uh, you know, most time your heart and gut will lead you in the right direction. Well, listen to his heart there and picks up the first down. A very gutsy call from Art Bryles and the Houston Cougars coaching staff. Now downtown, a jump ball on the sideline. Flags fly. Jerron Harvey made the catch. I think he was out of bounds. It was a nice throw from Cobb. But a flag thrown right at midfield. South Carolina is not afraid to just pin their ears back, blitz, and leave them out there one-on-one. -on -one. Captain Munnerlin was the man in coverage, a true freshman. Pass. Defense. Interference. Number one. Kevin Cobb can connect on some of these opportunities like this right here. And then you got some push. We'll see here. I, don't know. I didn't see it. If anything, it's just body language and pushing and trying to wall him towards the sideline. I, I don't know if you call this. I, I don't, I don't so. see. I don't see. I think Munnellin turned his body back to the ball and maybe because of his momentum with his body got into the receiver. You know, Harvey, Harvey's six foot five, had a chance to go up and make that play. He's got to make an effort to, to make those uh, jump balls and come down inbounds. First and ten at midfield, the pitch out, Ulrich, strung out, picks up a couple of yards and gets hammered out of bounds. There's a flag come out. Jasper Brinkley hit him right on the sideline, and Ulrich went flying into the bench and goes under the drink table. Man, that's a bowling ball going down the alley. I'll tell you what, he's only 170 pounds, so if he gets stuck by Brinkley, he's, he is flying, and he's into the bench in midair. And let's check in with Reese Davis after this replay. Is this a penalty, guys? It should be. I think so. Yes, that's a penalty. I think so. Hit him in the white stuff over there. You've got to throw the penalty. The white stuff. Yeah, be the out of bounds. I see it. I try to be real obvious for you guys. Thank you. And I, I got appreciate two it. Boston college graduates up here. Yes, yes. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough yeah. assignment. Yeah, we'll, we'll try and we appreciate we'll it. We'll try and muddle along with you as best we can. I, I need muddling. Second and eight from midfield. Cobb steps up, under pressure, somehow escapes the rush, and finds his man. What a play by Cobb, as now we check in with Reese Davis in our studio. All right, guys, Gamecock fans are halfway to a banner day because Clemson lost to Kentucky. Wildcats win the Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl. First bowl victory for the Cats since 1984. They beat Wisconsin in the Hall of Fame Bowl. Congratulations to Coach Brooks. Man, here's a guy that, that, that stayed the course, and he's got Kentucky on track now. Cobb again, play action on first down. Looks downfield. Up the sideline, he has Ulrich. First down, down to the 16-yard line. Well, there's Ulrich as a receiver. I mean, there's that little wheel route up the boundary, and Aldrich, I mean, he could flat out fly. How about Kevin Cobb, though, looking right? 
taking the pressure away. Stays right side, right, 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 back with his head to the left side, and Aldridge is open. That's knowing this offense. That's knowing his first read. He's looking right. He knows where Aldridge is going to be on the backside. He's probably run this play a thousand times over the years. He knows where everyone is on the field. First and ten at the 16-yard line. A five-man front for the Gamecocks. They run into it, up the middle, plenty of room for battle. And he picks up nine yards down to the seven. Little wham coming from a half back on the outside to the inside. Battle's a big dude. You know, we, we were talking about it. It, didn't, it said 235. Uh, he looks 250. Man, well, and Coach Brow says he thinks that Battle will play at 265 as a fullback in the NFL one day. I trust him. I trust his opinion on it because he is a big boy and he runs downhill. He's strong and physical. Second down and one at the seven. And still the Cougars in attack mode. It's battle. Traps up the middle. First and goal for Houston as he gets down to the four. Brought down by Marvin Sapp. The same play to the other side of the field. And Houston needs to get a little physical up front and run the football. It will definitely take the pressure off their passing attack. It takes the pressure off the offensive line. Offensive line and hate pass blocking all day long. I got, I got one for you. We came into this game and we were kind of thinking about the matchups, the SEC against Conference USA. Could Houston handle an SEC team? What would you think so far? I say definitely. They're handling them up front and they give themselves a chance. First and goal. The keeper for Kyle. And he may begin to have yard. Jasper Brinkley made the stop. Aldridge was the pitch man. And a nice job by the far side defenders for South Carolina. I'll tell you what, Brinkley is in on every tackle. He is in or around the pile. He's chasing the ball. He's got his hands on. If he's not making a solo tackle, he's in on it. That's a good shot there for mom and dad, twin sons. It's identical. That's that's all. I had a chance to play one year with my brother in college and one year professionally, and there's nothing like it. Second down and goal from the four. The 11th play of this drive. Quick snap count. And rolling his cob. Throws it away. And the Brinkleys are certainly a force on that South Carolina defense. Tom Harris has more. Bob, you guys are talking about the Brinkley twins. Both players transferred to South Carolina from Georgia Military College. Now, initially, the twins had planned to go to Georgia and play for the Bulldogs, but the staff at Georgia only wanted Jasper. It was made very clear that they were a package deal all the way. Jasper said there was no way he was going to split from his twin brother. South Carolina was more than happy to welcome the twins to Columbia. And coaches say sometimes they get in trouble because they go too hard. They tell them, let's go half speed, and these guys go full tilt. They get in a little bit of hot water, but that's, that's not a bad habit to have. And next year, Jordan Lindsay has an identical twin brother who might be playing here. They could have two sets on the same team. Well, they need to stop here, third and goal. Cobb to throw at the goal line. An easy touchdown. Walking across the tight end, Mark Hafner, and we're tied at 13. Looks like they lost the tight end coming across on the underneath route. Hafner starts on the right side over here, and he comes across going left on your screen. Kevin Cobb, again, Doug, knowing the offense, knowing where to look. It's a man-to-man -man coverage, almost a pit play. It's just a lot of traffic in there, and the defender can't get through the traffic. Makes it for an easy touchdown. But it's not always an easy read. You've got to see the guy gets turned loose. Bell's actually an extra point from Ben Bell is good, and that extra point gives the Cougars the lead. 14 to 13, back and forth we go. Two tight ends coming up with touchdown catches in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Second touchdown pass from Kevin Cobb gives Houston the lead back 14-13. The margin right now, a Ryan Suckup missed extra point. He also has a missed field goal. And as a result, South Carolina leaving four points out on the field, trailing by one with six minutes and 12 seconds to go before halftime. This is the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. I'm Bob Schuess in for John Saunders, who is... He's, he, he, oh, John, John's at home, says he's ill. He's probably protecting his two daughters <laughs> from a couple of guys when they come over and go out on dates with him. Here with Doug Flutie, Craig James, and Todd Harris. And it's been a great first half so far as Lefevre leans into a high kickoff that comes down to Munderland, left side at about the eight. That's it at the 26, and wrestled down 
At the 27, Todd Harris is on the sidelines making us all jealous. Bob, you know her, you love her. That's because she has two Grammys, third, 37 million records sold. Leanne Ryan's will be performing today at halftime. What's in store for you in 2007? I have a brand new record I'm working on right now that'll be on the spring called Family. Um, that I'm really excited about. I've written most of the music on it, so it's, it's an exciting time for me. As we said, you'll be performing halftime, but most importantly, you are a football fan. I understand you're a big fan of the Longhorns. What happened this year? Don't ask me that. I can't answer that. We did get Vin Chung, though, at Tennessee. So, you know, I live in Nashville, so I get to see my man, and I get to enjoy him still. <laughs> Final football question. Do you know who Doug Flutie is? Who? Oh, oh what yeah. a second time. <laughs> I will say this, though, when Doug Flutie won the Heisman Trophy, Leanne Ryan was two years old. Back to you, Bob. <laughs> wow. Talk oh, about the double shot. Todd, they team up on Todd the ball. Harris, <laughs> Every, every Todd. angle, Todd. I'm loving you, Todd. I knew who Doug Flutie was. I thank you, Bob. Yes. Of course, I went to I wish I knew. college, so. <laughs> Scramble by Blake Mitchell, a pickup of seven. It'll be second down and three, and we will see some of Leanne Rhymes' halftime performance coming up a little bit later on. As we are in a great first half here, and a shoestring track tackle. Corey Boyd picks up the first down, but Philip Hunt saved a much bigger gain as South Carolina moves the chain. South Carolina's first drive. Nine plays, all rushes on the ground, took it down the field and scored. The next scoring drive, six plays, five of them were passed. So they've done it both ways. They're going back to the running game here. They're doing just about anything they want on offense. And then offensively, total yards, both teams now getting pretty close to each other. Houston's right at 200. And now South Carolina's at about 175. So both offenses having success today. Boyd motions out of the backfield as Mitchell steps up in the pocket and tucks it under. No way to go with the football, and he's forced to take a sack. Cody Cree, a sophomore from Hooks, Texas, brought him down. A loss of six. And it was coverage back in the secondary. The Cougar secondary really did a nice job of finding manned up. Staying with them. And then the defensive line of that mad dog defensive line. What's our guy's name? Love, Mark Ray. <laughs> What do, you, what do you say about spreading the love? Spreading the love. Spreading the love. More than that. He had a little yeah, saying there. We got, we'll get it down. We'll get <laughs> it that, down. I have to think a mistake might have been made there as well by Carolina. On the replay, you could see two receivers, one in front of the other, only about three or four yards apart. I think, honestly, they misread the coverage. They thought it was a covered team. It was man-to-man -man underneath. The inside catch made by Savelle Newton. So the former quarterback, now the free safety, comes off the bench, catches a pass, and picks up seven yards. And of course, he is one of the players in a very, very select group. Four players in college football history at some point have ran for, thrown for, and caught for 600 or more yards, and he's one. Blake Mitchell started the season as the quarterback, wasn't getting it done. Newton came in, played quarterback. Now has gone back to defense and just a really outstanding athlete. Third down and nine. Four-man rush. Mitchell underneath looking for Rice. Knocked away. Kenneth Fontanet forces South Carolina to put the football away. Great job by Houston defensively in playing a two-deep coverage, which appears it could be a zone, maybe man. They go man-to-man -man underneath. He's playing inside leverage because he knows he has help over the top. And they're just locked on, man. They're, they're not afraid in this coverage. You're not afraid to get beat deep. You got deep help. So you play the underneath route tough. It all goes back for me. University of Houston, Art Riles going forward on fourth down from his own 30-yard line. You know what? His team just kept the momentum that, uh, that they're now carrying on. Eventually turned into a touchdown drive that gave the Cougars the, the one-point lead. This is the first punt of the afternoon. Ryan Suck up not only the place kicker, but also the punter averaging nearly 44 yards per kick this season. And he has one roll, takes a mild South Carolina bounce inside the 20, down close to the 15-yard line. A 46-yard kick, no return. Houston with a one-point lead. Back to the offense as we come back to Memphis. Cougar 
Cougars lead the Gamecocks in the first half of the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. The Gamecocks and Cougars both very much getting into the spirit of what bowl weeks are all about. For a long time before AutoZone was a part of the Liberty Bowl, it was the St. Jude Liberty Bowl because St. Jude's Children's Hospital has always been involved with this game here in Memphis. And the Houston football team went and spent some time with some children at this time of year that we all become very much aware need a smile and the Houston football players did their best to try and provide exactly that and you certainly see this bowl games all around the country players get out in the community and spend some time with some folks that need a smile at the holidays but much more guys acutely aware of it in this city but the St. Jude's Children's Hospital has always been a part and closely affiliated with Liberty Bowl. Oh it's a big part of this community down here in Memphis and back when in 83 we visited the or it, St. Jude's as well when we came to the Liberty Bowl in 83 to play Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, we heard the kids talking in the elevator about the visits and, and they were fired up about it. Well, it's such an impact on these young men that are out there that to see what goes on at this hospital and taking care of the kids and uh, and you could yeah, you could tell they really did impact it and they felt it. The maturity level, I mean, it's amazing the, the maturity in these kids and the way that really, it, it, it struck them. Allridge with a gain of a couple, lost the football. South Carolina thinks they have it, and they do. Anthony Ulrich, an innocent enough looking play into the line, but the ball was pulled out. The turnover inside Houston's red zone. And now South Carolina with a chance potentially to take the lead before halftime. Spoke about the momentum that the University of Houston had after going for it on fourth down. Ball comes out. From that angle there, the ball was out, it was a fumble. Jordan Lindsay recovered it, but it was Lemuel Jean-Pierre that stripped the ball away and forced the fumble of Anthony Allridge. You can't ask for better field position than the opponent's 19-yard line. Here comes Blake Mitchell. Second turnover in the first half. One turnover through the air and now one on the ground. And is this going to be a challenge or a replay from upstairs? Coach from Houston is challenging the play. We'll review it. Well, every play throughout college football, as we know, guys, is automatically reviewed by the replay booth. But each coach, if they even disagree with the fact that the play was not overturned, has a coach's challenge. And our Browse is going to use this challenge here. Just want to give him a little more time to look at this and make sure so he calls the timeout and challenges. You can't see his knees there, but it appears he's still up on his feet. Well, the most obvious thing here now is that it has been ruled a fumble on the field so there has to be conclusive evidence of some knee touching in the video for them to overturn this and craig that's probably the most important distinction that most when they look at instant replay need to understand how important the precedent that's set on the field is with regards to what ends up happening ultimately with the call and in this situation here i think it does two things one he has a shot at maybe getting it overturned but more importantly in my opinion you've got the quick turnover and you let your defense out there and you regroup and you think about it you don't let the offense snap the ball and hit you for a big one right away yeah it gives your defense time to settle down think through the situation you can go your defense coordinator make his play calls it appears that the ball is out and and that it, it will remain a fumble definitely there's nothing there that could or shows to overturn it houston came into today's game plus 10 this season overall in total turnovers which is a heck of a number when you play a 12 game season and you're plus After 10 review, for the year the play stands is called it is a fumble houston will be charged a timeout first down and now they've turned it over twice today it's not a bad gamble though if you're art riles to challenge a fumble inside your own 20 yard line not bad at all and again it's a, it's the composure thing for your defense to get out there get set get ready to go so a rare turnover again for houston we've seen the fourth interception of the season in the first half here from Kevin Cobb. And now a fumble by Allridge. First and 10 Gamecocks at the 19-yard line of the Cougars. Three minutes to go in the first half. Davis motions out of the backfield. Mitchell looks to the end zone for Rice. Back corner. Caught. Touchdown. Rice. 
Davis used every last inch of real estate to drag a foot. 19-yard touchdown strike. One play after the fumble, and the Gamecocks have the lead back. Great throw by Mitchell to the back corner of the end zone. This time he gets it out there, out in front of the receiver. Great catch, dragging the feet. Left foot is in. Both feet. Six feet four. Gets to the back and settles. Waits on the ball. Ball delivered. Twice now he was underthrown. This one here. Nice ball by Mitchell. What a catch by Rice. Suck up's extra point is good. 2.53 to go in the second. And there's a flag down. Again, it's a too deep coverage. The guy that has to make the play on this ball is the safety breaking across, coming off his hash mark to try to get to the throw. And he just, he's not over there in time. When you get down near the end zone, the ball gets there a lot quicker. The extra point is good. We have an unsportsmanlike number 60. We'll be penalized on the kickoff. Let's take another look as we have the second instance of an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on an extra point, but here's Rice once again going to work. Corner right. knows he has deep help. He's going to let him go. The safety's nowhere to be found. But there's no deep help over at the pylon at that back corner there. Safety's got to get off the hash mark wow. and either quarterback yeah. and break on the throw. That's a mighty long way for that safety to go to try to get with Sidney Rice. Now you got 13 points off two turnovers by the University of Houston. I just think that's poor coverage. If you're going to jam, you better touch him with the line of scrimmage and redirect that route. Reese Davis is standing by in our studios. Reese. All right, guys, coming up on the Smith-Barney halftime report, Clemson arrived to play their bowl game against Kentucky and arrived quite a bit late. We'll tell you about the Tigers' disappointing day. Do you think Art Ryle showed some guts? You haven't seen guts. And do you see what happens at the end of the Sun Bowl? And Tigers decided to skip the Mercedes. We'll tell you why coming up at halftime. All right, Reese, thanks very much. You know, Reese mentioned the Clemson game earlier today, and we're down in the lobby getting ready to come over to this game. And, of course, Dave Pash, Trevor Maddich, Rod Gilmore had that call from Nashville. And there are cheers going up in the lobby of our hotel like we were already at this game. And I looked over at a monitor, and the game was on in the lobby. And, boy, there were very, very happy South Carolina fans gathered around that television. There is some kind of hatred between South Carolina and Clemson. It is a genuine. A low kick from Sucka. And it's fielded by Marshall. Great field position coming for Houston as Marshall gets all the way into South Carolina territory. He caught that ball on the dead run on the bounce at about the 20-yard line and returned it 31 more yards. Again, why was South Carolina cheering what happened between Clemson and Kentucky? Well, it's a big win for Rich Brooks' program, and also for South Carolina and Clemson back on November 25th. A big sack pushed them back on the, the, the potential game-tying field goal at the end of the ball game. Clemson misses the field goal. South Carolina holds on. That was the first time in a long time that they have won on the road against Clemson. So now, two and a half minutes to go before halftime. Great field position at midfield for Kevin Cobb, who's given time, looking for Ulrich. He threw it well outside the boundary. Well, and Kevin misread the coverage or the route that was going on because the play should have gone inside to, to Harvey, number one, pushed it up the field for the vertical. Looked to me like he was looking over at the coaches saying, was that cover three? What was that, you know, yeah. trying to eye it up it. and see. So maybe he was a little indecisive on what the coverage was on that play. Kevin Cobb now 13 of 18 for 147 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. Second down at 10 from midfield. About an eight-yard game. Johnny Avery brings it down at the 42. One timeout remaining for Houston. All of that shifting prior to the snap is trying to get the matchup that you want, right? And, and that's what Art Browse is good at. It's creating matchups and also gives the quarterback a good read on what the coverage will be there. South Carolina went back to a man-to-man -man coverage, which is what Houston has been seeing out of South Carolina all day long. And when they go zone, it was just a little changeup. And a clock malfunction right now is Cobb has set up third down and two. The trap handoff up the middle. Plenty of room. Jackie Battle. Touchdown. 42 yards. These are 
nice short yardage goal line guy, isn't he? You're downhill runner there, Craig. Yeah, he got downhill all right, but he came out of the track meet blocks, and I'll tell you where the malfunction was, Bob. The malfunction was on the South Carolina defensive line. It's, it's, it's all out blitz. It's cover zero. There's no safety in the middle. There's an extra guy in the box, but they split it. Bunched up there, you see the cutback. And again, this is a big fullback type of player that uses his eyes to get him to the hole. Brinkley was unblocked there, but just couldn't get to the running back to make the play. The point after is perfect. 21-20. Houston answers back to take a one-point lead. This is a heavyweight fight here in the first couple of rounds. 6'2", 245 pounds, every bit of that. Strong, and he can run. And this is, for all the young guys out there, lift weights, be strong. He carries his pads well. That touchdown run by Jackie Battle ties the Houston school record for most rushing touchdowns in a season. 14th rushing touchdown this year. Antoine Smith back in 1996 at 14 rushing touchdowns for the Cougars. Capital One Bowl Week continues on ESPN tomorrow at noon. It's the Navy midshipmen with the number one rushing offense heading up against what will easily be their most daunting opponent this season, the Boston College Eagles and Matt Ryan aiming for their seventh straight poll title. The Heineke Car Care Bowl tomorrow also available on ESPN HD and ESPN Radio. Coverage begins with college game day at noon Eastern and what is sure to be a convincing Boston College win. <laughs> you too, Coach Eagles. Frank Spaziani, Frank's taking over. At defense coordinator from Boston College is the interim coach for this bowl game, so I wish you luck there, Frank. And how about the time that Tom O'Brien was at Boston College, just to be off on a tangent for a moment? He, did he give them great, great 10 years or what? He did, he really did. We're, the people of Boston College are very thankful. I didn't say we, but I was very <laughs> thankful for what Tom O'Brien did do at Boston College. Over his tenure. Good luck over at NC State. Now a pooch kick down the right sideline. This ball's going to flow out of bounds. And with two minutes and five seconds to go and two timeouts for South Carolina, they'll have good field position. Getting a little crafty there on the kickoff trying to make a play. Free kick out of bounds. I rule the ball will be placed on the 35-yard line. First down. So a free return for the Gamecocks to their own 35-yard line with plenty of time and two timeouts as well. You, you think they were trying to recover that? No, I think there, there are some coaches who really like that 30-yard, 30 32-yard little pooch kick where they know they can pin the receiver in and they're not going to give up a big return. I'll buy that. Well, there aren't. I, you know what? I don't necessarily like it all the time. I'd rather kick the ball deep without cover and pin them at the 20. <laughs> <laughs> so now Mitchell. Goes to work. Looks downfield. Creates some room for Rice. He's got it. At the 36-yard line. A quick strike from Mitchell to Sidney Rice. Kenneth Fontenet made the stop again of 28. When a quarterback can step up through and buy himself a little extra time and really see the field, it, it, it allows you to make the great throw. Rice takes it up, running across the field. Again, it's man under. He's got deep help. He beats him. Rice beats the defender across the field. It's the second move, the double move, the second move up top that got the free safety off of him to allow Rice to come open. Sidney Rice now with 95 yards and a touchdown here in the first half. To the outside goes Corey Boyd. Breaks a tackle. Spins out of bounds at the 27-yard line with 122 to go in the second quarter. And, you know, Blake Mitchell, he's played a good game. And he, and he had to have a good game to match Kevin, Kevin Cobb and Houston. He's throwing the ball extremely well. He's making good decisions. He's not, he doesn't have the turnover. Avoid the negative play, and you're going to be all right. Now Blake Mitchell can now get one of those jackets they make up for guys that played quarterback for Steve Spurrier in college. <laughs> As he drops back again, looking for Rice. Same spot in the end zone. Jump ball. And Rice turned into a defensive back and did well to knock it away from Quint Williams. You know that jacket you're talking about, is that a mental jacket or is it just a bodysuit? I think it is a couple of I think it's a straight straps. jacket with straps <laughs> is what it is. I think it does occasionally <laughs> pin your arms. <laughs> but, but how many times, though, when you get a big receiver like Rice outside, I like my chances of that. Go ahead and put the ball up. I agree 100%. Rice had the best opportunity of anyone to get that ball. And a heck of a job by Rice's defensive back by going up and knocking the ball out. Third down and one. Boy, the lone setback. And looking for the first down is Boyd, and he's got it. 
So the clock will stop as Boyd moves the pile to about the 22-yard line. 1.07 to go in the first half. And South Carolina still with a couple of timeouts. Yeah, there's plenty of time on the clock. You're already down inside the 25-yard line a minute to go. Well, the AutoZone Liberty Bowl is a good one between Houston and South Carolina, and they actually played a good one back in 1983. No, Boston no. College, yes, led by Jack Bicknell, Who's the taking short guy? on the Fighting Irish and Jerry Faust, and the man of the day, Gerard Phelan. No, it was Doug Flutie. Absolutely. His passing stats, 16 of 37, 287 yards, three touchdowns, but here's the play of the game. 1918, two-point conversion, no. And 1918 was the final, as we are joined in the broadcast booth today by the 1983 Liberty Bowl MVP. I am in a losing effort. He won the MVP. I'm really glad we had a chance to see this video because everywhere I go with you all over America, Doug, everybody <laughs> talks about the Hail Mary pass. You really did throw another I played, ball. I played a couple other games. Unbelievable, it is. man! And you know what? Cool. I was still short. <laughs> And you know what, Steve Earhart, who's the director here of this nice Liberty Bowl, said, hey, make sure you tell everybody it was really warm weather that day. That smoke was just fog coming out. That was a cold day, but it is beautiful today. In the last four or five games they've had here have been awesome weather. They've put on a good bowl week. Well, it's been, and, and like you said earlier, Bob, it's a great atmosphere. You've got a half the stadium in South Carolina, half is the University of Houston. South Carolina travels. Houston, very impressive that their group showed up. They came over and traveled as well. What do you remember from that week most? It was cold. <laughs> <laughs> the one, I, I, I always, I know, I always think back to the two-point conversion and had an opportunity to win the game. It was my only game ever against Notre Dame. And the fact that Jerry Faust, that was his bowl win that he had there with Notre Dame, his short tenure, but um, it was a game we felt got away. I think that was the last time Notre Dame beat BC. Probably. Yeah. You think so? <laughs> How about that yeah, field goal? Did not. Didn't, the, didn't Boston <laughs> College kick a field goal through, through the big H and... Yeah. I remember that something along one. those lines in 1994. First and ten after the timeout for South Carolina. Mitchell again over the middle into traffic and almost intercepted. A dangerous throw. Brandon Brinkley over the top. Quinte Williams was underneath as they had Kenny McKinley bracketed at the three-yard line. And, and bracket is the key word, Bob, because many times Blake Mitchell doesn't see the inside bracket part of it. Sure, if the, if the receiver is moving to the inside and the safety's not there, he's open. But this is an example of Mitchell getting lucky forcing the ball in there. I'll tell you, Brinkley was sitting flat-footed, broke hard on the ball. He's got nowhere to retreat to. And that's the reason the corners of the end zone have the better opportunity out of those coverages down and tight. Second down and 10 from the 22. Mitchell comes underneath, has Corey Boyd, and he's inside the 10 to the nine yard line. First down, that stops the clock. 52 seconds to go. First and goal for the Gamecocks, and they still have a timeout. Still have time to run your entire offense. You've got 50 seconds, a timeout. Inside the 10 now, the, 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 the pass attempts will probably start going towards the end zone now. At the Rather top of the your screen ball. goes Sidney Rice. Here comes the blitz. It's a handoff instead to Boyd. At the five. Touchdown. Corey Boyd weaves his way up the middle. And the Gamecocks take the lead back. A nine-yard touchdown run with 42 seconds to go in the half. This is looking easy. How's this shootout going there, Kirk? It's a coming. And you know what? Corey Boyd in the backfield. And you had the amount of time they had on the clock here with a timeout. This is an excellent call to run the football. Boyd, Dak there, defense trying to get in the end zone to protect the pass. So Boyd with a pair of touchdowns here in the first half. And now Sucka, who has missed an extra point. Not this time, right down the middle, and it's a six-point lead for South Carolina with 42 seconds to go in the second quarter. Just spread the field out, one back set, and he picks and weaves his way through. Just that's a it, shot right to the hand. That's why he's on yeah. the bench. The helmet went right to that cast where he has the banged up hand, and right here it comes across the goal line. Helmet on the hand, you know, as a back. I don't know how many times I had my hand busted up with a face mask. Have you, you ever had that? No. You just always. No. You, I you threw the ball to guys like you and got rid of it and let you get here. 
Now Steve Spurrier always the center of attention in the South Carolina sideline. Now Todd has more. Oh, Bob, no question. Steve Spurrier has been known to let his opinion be known over the years. But one thing you have to give him credit for, putting his money where his mouth is. When he came to Columbia, USC offered him a salary of $1.5 million. Coach Spurrier settled on $1.25 million, earmarking the other $250,000 to be split evenly among his assistants. And Coach Spurrier and his wife Jerry have donated finances in excess of $20,000 annually to the University of Florida. While in Gainesville, since coming to USC, he learned the track and field program needed some extra funding. So Spurrier wrote a check for $25,000. He's also generated another $85,000. And part of his package allows him to get eight tickets to every home game. He auctions those off to raise more money for the university. So Steve Spurrier definitely loves this university. They can't like to see that kick come down to Anthony Aldridge. Although Aldridge is running a lot of yards just to get out to the 24-yard line looking for some room. But that's great when Steve Spurrier, I guess at some point in your life, you've made your money and you feel like you have a chance to give a little back to the university that you're working for. And, and that's certainly what he's done at Columbia. Now, he's the right guy. You hear many times now that these, these ADs are out looking for coaches. You need somebody like Spurrier who has the background, has, the, has had the success, but who will stay with your school. You know, the, this, this, this school hopping stuff is killing these programs. Cobb looking for a big play before halftime. Finds a man open over the middle. Marshall down the sideline. It stays in bounds. Touchdown. Unbelievable. Second touchdown of the first half for Vincent Marshall. That one good for 77 yards. And Houston's tied the game with 11 seconds to go in the first half. Most teams would kneel on the ball, get to halftime, and say, let's, let's just move forward. Houston, we talk about their quick strike capability, believe in their offense, trust their quarterback, and they come out slinging it, and Marshall just taking it down the sideline. I don't think Houston came into this contest with the idea of just looking good and being competitive. They went for it on fourth from their own 30, made it. They come out and they're firing the ball down the field for a touchdown before half. Well, Vincent Marshall in his career now, about 3,700 yards receiving. When a quarterback has time to step up through and move around and hold on to the ball, a little mix up in the backfield, but hold on to the ball. Now he's got great vision. Now he can see the whole field. And here comes Marshall. But, but you know, you, you wonder, hey, can, can Kevin Cobb play at the next level in the NFL? A quarterback has to be a quarterback in situations like that. Most of the time, we see college quarterbacks break the pocket and they run, right? Here he pulls up, finds a guy who's going to take it the distance for him. And picks up a great block downfield from wide receiver Jerron Harvey. There's your field leader, your field general. Oh, my God, we got a touchdown. <laughs> oh, my, look at that. Art Bryles, how fired up he was jumping up and down. Just, I'd like to see Steve Spurrier's cutaway of him, too, you know? I bet he, yeah, he had Steve's, him fired. By Steve's him. reaction was a little subdued, for sure, I'm sure. We, we've set a new record, the highest scoring first half in Liberty Bowl history. The AutoZone Liberty Bowl now with 55 points in the first half. Boise State and Louisville had the previous record of 52. Only back in 2004. You know, Marshall made a really nice catch on the dead run. The ball was about knee high. Cop kind of sidearm slinged it, and it came in a little low. Bobbled it a couple times, brought it in, and then found the sideline. Got some good downfield blocks from his buddies. The other receivers like, didn't catch who made the block, but he really screened off two defenders. And Cobb and Marshall have now combined for 26 touchdowns between the two during their career. Vincent Marshall is third all-time in school history with 26 touchdowns. Every touchdown pass he's ever caught at Houston has come from Kevin Cobb. And now here is the unpurposed scoop kick that is down immediately at the 32-yard line. There's still seven seconds oh. to go for South Carolina. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. To take a chance. <laughs> Almost 600 total yards of offense here in the first half alone. Who's South Carolina going? Are oh, they going to let it run out? Well, it's a change of possession. So rather than one play, the clock's automatically going to roll the minute the ball is placed ready for play. And that will take us to halftime. So standing by the old ball coach with Todd. Coach, your thoughts on this quick pace first half? Well, both defenses are struggling. So uh, our kicker cost us four points, but he's an excellent kicker. So hopefully we'll kick a little bit better second half. Well, how do you stop that quick strike offense of Houston? Well, obviously not what we're doing. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> well, our half 
halftime score. The highest scoring first half in AutoZone Liberty Bowl history. 28-27, Houston over South Carolina. Now we head to the studio. The Smith Barney Halftime Report standing by. Reese Davis. Houston now looking at us. Bob Schusen in for John Saunders this week here with Craig James and Doug Flutie. Todd Harris along the way as well. And guys, boy, it was just a pinball machine back and forth. Nearly 600 yards of total offense. And I, and I think when we started out this ball game, we felt like Kevin Cobb and the Houston Cougars offense would really get things going. They have a lot of playmakers and weapons on the outside. The question for me was whether or not that Blake Mitchell would make enough plays for South Carolina to keep them in the game. Yeah, we felt like South Carolina could run the football, but it would have to be in the pass game where they made their big plays and be able to stick it into the end zone. They've been able to do that. Blake Mitchell has avoided the interception, the negative play, and it's been back and forth up and down the field. Well, we started early as Kevin Cobb got things going inside of the first two minutes and two seconds. And his main target, as it has been throughout his career, Vincent Marshall. The speed that Marshall has going against that single coverage was outstanding and all that single coverage on the outside allowed Jackie Battle with his legs on the inside to make a play right before half. The nice scrambling and the movement by Cobb in the backfield finding Marshall coming across which turned out to be a humongous play in the first half. Just a humongous play. I'll tell you what, South Carolina came back and just ran it down their throat. They ran, one series they ran the ball nine straight times to stick it in the end zone. Both, both Boyd and Davis alternating running the football and then when they had to go to the air, it's to Rice. Who else? Rice goes up, makes the catch in the corner of the end zone. Right back at you. Big play guys. All the big play guys we talked about in pregame, they're all out there doing their thing. Now, Steve Spurrier gave us a moment to laugh before halftime when <laughs> Todd asked him, what do you do to stop that high-powered Houston offense? At least in the second half. And he said, so far, not what we're doing. Yeah. And I, I'm wondering what adjustments he's going to make. But Todd is standing by with something on our trials. Todd? Yeah, just moments ago, talking with Coach Browns, and I asked him, when you're in a 55-point shootout, what do you tell your guys at halftime? And he just rolled his eyes and said, well, he says, I'm all right with the numbers, but I'll tell you what, we're doing a lot of things that we're not used to doing, and that is namely turning the ball over. He said, if we cut down those turnovers and we play our kind of ball, he says, if we hang in there, he says, I like our chances in the end. And Todd, it's a great point in that now Houston is plus eight on the season in turnovers, but they were plus 10 coming in, which I guess, Doug Flutie, is what happens when you have a quarterback that throws 27 touchdowns and three interceptions. I'll tell you what, he's done a great job all year protecting the ball, all his interceptions. They're not bad decisions. The two turnovers did happen today, one an interception by a defensive end, the other a fumble, but they're, they're all right. He's still making good decisions. And, Craig, right now, say you're a defensive coordinator and these numbers come up. Well, here, here you go. You're talking about the turnovers there and the points off the turnovers, but the defensive coordinators, in my opinion, need to kind of get, put that mindset to your defense of let's keep them in front of us. We've got to we got to keep them in front. We can't go single coverage on the outside make them, all the time. Make them march the ball 15 plays and see if they make a mistake. You're right. I think especially for South Carolina defensively, they got to back off a little bit of the man-to-man -man coverage. Back to the ground goes Davis. Spins for about six yards. The guys, the number that jumped out at me as well for Houston, 122. Davis on the carry for the game cuts. That's the speed we're talking about. Six decisions taken underneath the routes. Blake Mitchell's thrown the ball deep to Sidney Rice a few times, so we haven't seen a lot of their underneath passing game like Houston's been able to do. Yeah, Cobb said his job is to distribute the ball, get it in the hands of the receivers, and that's what he's been doing. Let them do the work. Mike Davis with six carries for 49 yards. And it's back to the ground once again. And this time, Boyd, a gain of three, stopped a yard shy of a first down by Trent Allen. I think the Houston defense on the other side of it, they played a lot of zone. Even when they go man, it's a too deep man under, so it's still always a four-man rush. They've got to take a few chances. Leave their guys one-on-one -on -one once in a while and put some pressure on the quarterback and, and commit to stopping the run game. A big play early here in the third quarter. 90 seconds gone by in the second half. And South Carolina faced with third and one. Davis, he will not get there. Second effort got him close, but he stopped a half yard shot. Now this is the exact same spot on the field where Houston went for it in the first half. Does Steve Spurrier do that now? 
No, I think it's too early here. Now the game's where there's too tight. Ace formation. Davis in the backfield. Penetration by Houston's defensive line. And, and I just think it's way too early here in the second half when you're basically tied up. You don't want to give Houston's offense the ball at the plus 30. Well, you know what? You give it to them at the minus 10, and they're going to go 90 yards. If you give them at the plus 30, it's only 30 yards, so you get the ball back quicker. What the heck? Go for it. Here we go. Great call, Bob, if you make it. <laughs> if. If. I set Davis is the tailback. They run the play. They run wide. Davis just does reach his way across the 30 to pick up the first down. And boy, he looked like he was stopped a couple of yards shot and ran through the initial hit of Will Gully. Two to three yards in the backfield. He kept his feet, drove. Great second effort. Great call. Got the first Go for it on fourth down in your own end. Your guy in tailback is better than the defense on this one here because the defensive call was the right call. Gully, the safety, comes up. 18 is there. It's a little Gully's too high. Got, he's, he's high. He's got to play lower. He's done that now a couple of times in this game. How about both coaches going for it on fourth down and a half yard from their own 30-yard line? That shows the respect for the opposing team's offense. Play action for Mitchell. Fires one over the middle and has Rice. Lost the football. Is that a catch and a fumble, or is it incomplete? No ruling as of yet. Now the officials say incomplete. Very, very close. Willie Gaston knocked it away. Wow, this is close. I mean, it, it appeared from up here that he caught it and ran for a couple of steps. Well, he's nice on his double moves to get that extra time away from him. It's but a bang, bang. It, it's, it's a close, but uh, ruling on the field. Good call. Nothing so far. And remember... Art Bryles has had his no. one challenge for the game. He cannot challenge anymore. Incomplete. Good call. Corey Boyd now in the game on second and ten. To the outside. There he goes, goes Mitchell. Hey. Noah White side. Loose. Into Houston territory with a first down. Check that McKinley picks up 26 yards. This is a nice job of, of taking what the defense gives you. There's so much focus on Sidney Rice, number four, who's coming back to the inside, that it opens up McKinley on the outside. you got to be able to come off up top and see the whole thing. You had three, three defensive backs on one receiver. I'll tell you what, McKinley and Rice have combined for over 1,700 yards receiving. That's the most in school history by a tandem. You read your notes this week, huh? <laughs> Nice job. You didn't tell me that. Yeah. Oh, okay. That puts McKinley close to 800 yards this season. Boyd. For a couple of yards to the 40. L. Ash in on the stop. A transfer from Tennessee. Corey Boyd with a couple of touchdown runs. And all in all, three touchdown runs for South Carolina. Second down and seven. And now Mitchell with the play clock at nine. Drops straight back. Dumps it down to Boyd in the open field, making players miss in space. Gets to the outside and has a first down to the 25-yard line as we check in with Todd Harris. Well, I'll tell you what, it's something, everything's old is new again. The Mad Dog defense is back. This is what the defense called themselves. This is the defense they had back in the 60s and 70s at Houston. Now, if you have a good play in the defense, they reward you with a snicker bar. That's called a dog biscuit. If you deplete someone, lay them out, you get a nest in the crunch bar. Now, in a totally unrelated story, for some reason, the weight on the defense has gone up this year. <laughs> but it's gone up. They're not giving out. Explain it. Real mystery. <laughs> not giving out too many candy bars tonight right now, Ty. <laughs> no, they're losing some weight, running around the field. No one's got a dog biscuit coming. As Mitchell drops to throw. Again to the outside. Trapped. He threw it low, and Andy Boyd couldn't scoop it up. Well, that mad dog defense has... Uh... <laughs> They haven't headed out too many Snickers bars in this one here. Neither defense has. <laughs> no, there are a couple little puppies right now. Over there. Yeah. No mad dogs on the defense right now. They'll come up with a big play, though. Somewhere along the line, they got to just keep fighting, keep slapping people around. The ball's going to come loose. There's Mark Way Love. And, and he, he, you know, he did not come into our meeting with any snacks yesterday. There were, there were no Snickers bars, oh, and no yeah. crunches. Oh, none for us, anyway. Well, he probably ate them before he came yeah, in. Yeah, he 
Allen there was Liddell. a lot of food out there, though. You just saw the defensive coordinator who took over as the defensive coordinator last year after a lopsided bowl loss. To the end zone, incomplete. Mike West had it in his hands and couldn't hold on. Perfect throw from Blake Mitchell. Nice read by Mitchell. He had one-on-one -on -one with Miller. There's no safety help on the play. West beats him on the play, and Miller decides, I can't get there, so I'm going to undercut and go for the ball. Still couldn't get to the ball. It should have been caught. Can't do it much better. Mm. Mm. And Blake Mitchell did it there, and he knows. Now it's third down and 10. This is the 11th play of the drive for South Carolina. They are four for seven so far tonight on third down. And Houston shows blitz. Here they come from the blind side. The ball comes out. And the Gamecocks recover. A loss of about three yards. That time the all-out blitz came. And Mitchell was sacked. The ball knocked out by Ernest Miller, who came on the far side. And, you know, there's not been a lot of blitzing, at least successful blitzes, that have been done in this football game by either defense. So that might be the adjustment that you see here in the second half. If you're going to get beat, go ahead and let's try it. You've got to create a negative play somewhere to stop the drive, and they just did by bringing it. It's been a tough night so far for Ryan Suckup. Only three missed field goals on the season tonight. A missed field goal and a point after. 45 yards away. It has plenty of leg, and this one is perfect. And that gives the Gamecocks the lead back 30 to 28 with 9.56 to go in the third quarter. That makes suck up one of only nine kickers this year to hit a field goal of 55 yards long. You weren't the only guy. <laughs> As the Gamecocks right now are beating Houston 30 to 28 with 9.55 to go in the third quarter here at the AutoZone Liberty Bowl and almost a moral victory a moment ago for the Houston defense holding the opposition only a field goal. Haven't seen that much. It's a big time move. Somebody didn't get in the end zone. There have been a lot of touchdowns scored. Suckups kickoff this time returnable. Taken by Marshall at the goal line, bobbled it for a moment and instead thinks better and takes a knee as Ulrich was there. Ulrich actually came up with the football. He and Marshall looked like they got tied up. And now most touchdown drive this season <laughs> under two minutes. Houston leads the nation as they've had three tonight, 201 or less. Three of their four touchdown drives, less than two minutes. Don't blink, they'll be in the end zone again. Well, and again, this is where we now find out what South Carolina is going to do differently on defense. Not what they did in the I, first. I just can't see him staying. <laughs> I, I'm sure Spurrier told the guys, look, we're going to do something different here. Back up. It's amazing about the touchdown drives we've had tonight for Houston as Aldridge scampers for about three yards. They've had no field position. This is their eighth drive. Their previous seven drives have begun at their 23-yard line or worse. I mean, every drive they've had has basically been the length of the field. They need room to work with, Bob. <laughs> they stretch the field. Although on first down there, South Carolina did go to a zone defense, so that was a changeup for them on first down. Second down and seven. Much better starting field position for South Carolina so far in this game, and they have the two-point lead. To the near side, it's Marshall. And he steps out of bounds with a first down at the 32-yard line. And in case you're just joining us, we welcome you to Memphis. This is the AutoZone Liberty Bowl, and it has been a shootout. 30-28 to 28, South Carolina leads Houston. I'm Bob Oshusen with Craig James, Doug Flutie, Todd Harris. South Carolina so far has gotten two touchdown passes from their quarterback. Kevin Cobb has responded with three touchdown passes for the Cougars as well. And he has been nearly perfect tonight, 15 of 20. A great interception by Jordan Lindsay, the only blemish on his resume. Empty set when they're going to back off, throw the ball to the flat like they did there on that quick little screen to the receiver. That's going to be the answer to that soft zone. And now flags come out. Still six on the play clock. This will most likely cost Houston five yards. Try the snap, false start on the offense. Number 64, five yard penalty, remains first down. That's Michael Blesch, the left guard, only a sophomore, called for the penalty. So now it's first and 15. 
chance, Greg, for them to just spread the field that much more and stretch the field. They're probably happy that they picked up that penalty. Here, here's what you got to be concerned with. You can't give too much space and room to throw the ball quickly to the flats, just like they did with Marshall and his speed. Off the edge, the blitz comes from the blind side. Downfield, trying to beat it, and a flag comes out. Cloud just released the ball before he got hit, and this will go as pass interference. Savelle Newton was beat, and he knew it. That's Newton. He's one of the best athletes on the team. He's a quarterback. He's a receiver. And Pass interference on the defense. Number 15. 15-yard 15 penalty. Automatic first down. You meant to say number 13. South Carolina did come with the blitz. They're in man-to-man -man coverage all over the field on this play. One-on-one. He got, he got a little nervous when Marshall started to go by him. Well, and, and, well uh, obviously, Newton, who was already six yards off the ball, how about Cobb hanging in there? He, he started drifting a little to the right. He knew where the unblocked guy was coming from, bought an extra fraction of a second. I, I really am impressed with Kevin Cobb and the way he plays the game. I remember watching him when he was a freshman, played, I think, up at Michigan. And for one quarter, they were with him for a while. <laughs> then the floodgates opened. A bullet to the outside has Donnie Avery for a first down into South Carolina territory for the 47, a gain of 11. Nice rhythm throwing that time, South Carolina. Again, a first down zone coverage. Relatively easy throw for Cobb, no one in his face. Just very impressed with this offense and his composure. Says he's going to play in the Senior Bowl coming up down in Mobile, which will be a great showcase. For Kevin Cobb against all the other great players of the NFL that, uh, of the future. Yeah, act, it give a chance to, for the scouts to see him stack up against those other guys that are getting all the pub all year. And his numbers certainly match up with some of the best senior quarterbacks in the country. Jackie Battle up the middle for five yards. Coming up next at 8 Eastern here on ESPN, Capital One Bowl Week continues. Two schools will meet on the gridiron for the first time ever. Purdue led by Curtis Painter. They got Sam Hollenbach and the Maryland Terrapins, the Champs Sports Bowl. Coming up next at 8 Eastern, also available on ESPN HD and ESPN Radio. I, I really respect a lot Ralph Bridge and what he's done with Maryland this team this year. Nobody thought they'd be where they are. Can they get to the quarterback? Purdue protects pretty well. Maryland usually doesn't get a lot of sacks. Cobb empties the backfield on second and five, and it's a trap inside handoff to Rashawn Pope, and he has a first down and a gain of seven to the Cougars' 35-yard line. And again, guys, the, goal, the game that follows us has two quarterbacks that have put up great numbers this season. Painter and Hollenbach both with a lot of yards. You know, a lot of yards there, especially for Painter. Uh, but I'll tell you what, Maryland offensively has not done a heck. They've been doing it with smoke and mirrors. They turn the ball over. They don't have a lot of yards. They're not in the top 60 offense or defense, but they still win games. First and 10. Cobb with time. Going for the end zone and way over the head. And incomplete. Avery, the intended receiver, and he broke his pattern off at about the 10 yard line. The thing I was going to say before that snap, the previous two snaps have been running plays. Just very, you know, going back and conservative. Houston is smart. Art Bryles doesn't always push the vertical button. You know, you, you work the system. You work it. You set the defense up for a play that, that's going to go big for you. Well, that little trap play almost busted for a big, huge play. That, you know, it was a nice little game, but keeping the defense off balance. Bryles voted as the Conference USA Coach of the Year by the other coaches in the conference. On second and ten. A bullet thrown by Cobb. And he has Avery for a gain of eight yards. Nice coverage on the play. Again, I thought once he scrambled to the right, he had one receiver on that whole side of the field. Not thinking, okay, throw this one away. Just throw it away, take the incompletion, let's come back and live another day. Gets flushed out to the right. Finds Avery, sneaks one right by. Completion. He waited long enough, Cobb did, for the passing lane to open up and then throws the ball in. Well, I'm thinking throw that one away and let's live another down. He makes a play out of it. Houston is six for eight on third down. Third down and two. They keep it on the ground and they won't get there. Jackie Battle stuffed in the middle. Ryan 
Brown, the first to get there for the Gamecocks. And does Houston go for it now on fourth down at three? I say so. Do the confidence, the confidence in this offense, he believes in Cobb as a quarterback and decision making. He's going to let him go for it. Here comes Kevin Cobb. And earlier, remember, we heard a soundbite from Art Browse basically say you go with what your heart and your gut tells you to do. He, he feels that quarterback is an extension of the coaching staff, and he believes in it. And they'll run the football. Allridge gets the corner. First down and more. Out of bounds with a late hit inside the 20-yard line at about the 16. Jasper Brinkley rode him out, but there was some extra there. This will be half the distance to the goal. <laughs> that dude is fast. I, I, personal foul. They hit number 36. When you're that, this is the goal. Automatic first down. When you're that small, you better be fat. Well, and I'll tell you what's happened now. We've seen twice where people hit him up late out of bounds. And the reason that people hit him out of bounds late, you're going so blazing fast trying to get up to him, you can't slow down and stop the hit. Then Brinkley can't get there fast enough. Puts a hand on the pull him down, and then the other defender comes up with a late hit, 36. He'll mess up a lot of hamstrings in his career. Stoney Woodson called for the personal foul. So half the distance to the goal puts the ball inside the 10-yard line at the 8. First and goal for Houston as they try to retake the lead. What a game this has been. The fade pattern. It's a jump ball for Harvey. Out of bounds and incomplete. Captain Munnerlin, a true freshman in coverage. Done a nice job, hasn't he? Munnerlin. Yeah, great job boxing him out. The six foot five receiver pushes him out. Great body position. Couldn't play it any better. So second down and goal from the eight. I and mean, this has been such an efficient offensive attack tonight for the Cougars. 5.52 to go in the third quarter. The 11th play of a drive that started back at their own 20 yard line and just featured a fourth down and three conversion. Cobb on the keeper, has to unload it. Casper Brinkley just about had him for a sack and now the flag comes out. I, I don't know about that. I thought he had a receiver in the area. It looks like the ruling on the field would be grounding. Was in the area. Oh. Yeah. Therefore, there is no foul. A great job by Cobb to somehow unload the football then and avoid the sack. Would have been a big loss. I think Casper Brinkley, 51. Doug and I watching him in game films. He really does his job. He stays at home. He doesn't get beat on the outside. Yeah, we saw that uh, in the Clemson game. He made a couple plays on, on bootleg type action where he kept his leverage, contains the quarterback. It's tough to get the outside. He's a great athlete, too. Third down and goal at the seven. So check that the eight. Shotgun set for Cobb. Four receivers. Trips to the top of your screen. And the missed snap. Cobb after the loose ball. And kicks it out of bounds backwards. And flags come out. A disaster for Houston as they have it third down and goal at the seven and are about to come away empty. Well, this will be this will be fourth down, loss of down from that spot right where he kicked illegal it. Illegal kick from the spot of the foul. It's a 15-yard penalty, also loss of down. This will put them back near midfield. First and goal at the eight turns into fourth and goal from the 50. That's what's so hard about that, that directional snap with the quarterbacks rolling. It's a really difficult thing for your center to perfect. And, uh, you know, like South Carolina did when they got down, they stopped themselves and forced themselves into a field goal attempt. Houston's offense does the same. You know, Cobb showing composure at first to go over. He wanted to just scoop it up and throw it out of bounds. And he was taking a step, but he mishandled it a second time. And he, was kind of, he did not want it to turn over or become a turnover or a fumble. Recovery for South Carolina. He kicks the thing out of bounds. You got to try to drop on it again. Huh? You think? Who's on second? <laughs> I don't know. Third base. All in all, guys, a loss of 42 yards. Still on Dottie, the center. Try, tries, like you said, a directional snap. Tries to lead the quarterback so he can get on the perimeter quicker. 
Fourth and goal at the 50. And here's the punt. It'll land inside the five and bounce into the end zone. So that play, and even the play that preceded it, almost acting as a turnover for Houston as they are inside the 10-yard line, first and goal, and come away with no points. South Carolina with the lead and the ball. We come back. 30 to 28, South Carolina has the lead over Houston with five and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. And what has been a shockingly slow-paced third quarter, there's only been three points scored in this quarter. We'll have to check and see what's wrong with the two offenses. Man, they might be tired. <laughs> And this will be a false start against the Gamecocks. Iowa snap. False start on the offense. Number 93. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. A moment ago, Houston with first and goal at the eight turned into fourth and goal and a punt from the 50. And I think Todd's now our researcher, and we will check in with him in a moment. First and 15 from the 15. For South Carolina. Mitchell play action. Up the seam. First down. Out to the 33. Tuck. I've got my ESPN College Football Encyclopedia. I know it looks like the Steve Spurrier playbook, but I can't find anything in here with fourth and goal with 50 yards to go, but I did stop on a fine page right here. All this talk about Boston College. There's another page in here, but it's real short on SMU, so I didn't go to that one. I just stopped on this one. Well, this BYU one's got pages upon pages. Come on, Todd. We exchange Christmas cards that, with that's each other. True. You're busting me like that? That's true. It does have a whole section on the pony, though. Okay. Not much on SMU, but the pony, it's loaded. Yeah. So we'll get to that right here. Uh, we are gonna Did he say the you. pony was loaded? <laughs> <laughs> well, we are in Miffles. <laughs> we'll have to keep looking in the ESPN football encyclopedia to see if fourth and goal from the 50 has ever taken place. Or if a team punting on first and goal. We'll step aside as Kenneth Fontenet shake it up on that last play as helped off. South Carolina with a two-point lead. It's on Liberty Bowl. It's been a shootout with five minutes to go in the third quarter. South Carolina has the football back, just picking up a first down. And now out across their own 33-yard line. Back to the ground. Boyd somehow runs out of a tackle. Reverses field. Picks up a block from Blake Mitchell. Flags down as Boyd is into Houston territory at the play stands. But this one will be coming back. A great individual effort. They're going to uh, get called on a hold here or go to use a hand on the back side here when he reversed field. It looks like clipping. This is a huge call. Block of the back on the offense, number 77. 10 yard penalty, makes first down. Isn't that over the use of hand signal? <laughs> it, it was, though. You know, Meredith, if Meredith doesn't clip, Boyd's not getting around the corner. Backside containment was there, 77. Mitchell's got him. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> huh? What part of that back? <laughs> That's why quarterbacks don't block too often. Swing and miss. Nice try, though. <laughs> First and 20. Mike Davis back in the game at tailback for the Gamecocks. Rice at the top of your screen to the short side. This is Davis. Not too much. A couple of yards at best. This is how you play defense. You stay on the field, run the football, let the clock wind down and of course this first and 20 is not a, an opportune time to run the football. Tell you what, Houston's look good against the run. I mean, the reversing of fields and all that created the play, but two straight plays. They've stuffed this offense at the point of attack on the run play, which they weren't doing earlier. Second down and 20. This time it's Mitchell to throw. Fires the slant and has Rice. A gain of about 13 yards after the 36-yard line. And Capital One Bowl Week continues on ESPN. Tomorrow afternoon, a pair of games. First at 4.30, Colt McCoy returns to lead 18th-ranked Texas against Drew Tate and Iowa in the Alamo Bowl. And then at 8 Eastern, it's Virginia Tech and their defense taking on Matt Stafford and Georgia, the Chick-fil-A Bowl. But both games are available on ESPN HD and ESPN Radio. Third down and seven. 
Houston showed blitz. They back out. Now they creep back up. And it looks like Mitchell's changing the play at the line. Four seconds on the play clock. Easily gets the snap off and finds Rice right at the first down marker. Then that will be good for a South Carolina first down. Blake Mitchell's obviously go-to guy is Sidney Rice. Rice, one of the best receivers in the country. He's on wide to the right side. They're going to clear to the flat with the inside slot receiver. And Rice is just patient. Even though he looks like he might be covered, you can't stay with him. He's smart. He feels it. Gaston's running at him from inside out to wall him off, and he still gets beat on the route. The 11th 100-yard game for Sidney Rice. That's a school record. He already also holds the school record with 23 touchdowns during his career. He's a sophomore who I guess has said that he'll be back for his senior season, for his junior season. Mike Davis up the middle. And he fights his way across the 50. Will Gully brought him down after a gain of six. Overcoming the penalty, come back, get a first down, or put the ball on the on the ground, they get another big gain on first down. South Carolina is doing whatever they want offensively. It's a little more methodical now than the Houston style of doing it. They're getting it done. And again, this is I, Steve Spurrier, you know, wants to run the football right now. He wants to keep the ball away from Kevin Collins. 358 total yards for South Carolina. 354 total yards for Houston. And adding to the total, another first down. Mike Davis picks up five. L.C. Kirkpatrick made the stop at the Houston 45-yard line. Cougars' defensive line is going to have to step up now. They have to recognize the situation that the game has put them in. And, and now you're going to have to go out single on the outside. You can put pressure on those corners to do their job and let people stay inside and tackle the football. Exactly. You're going to have to take some chances, leave the guys one-on-one -on -one out. Say, hey, if they score one big play, they score one big play. But let's create a negative play to stop a drive. Senior Will Gully had to come out. Something's wrong. Freshman goes in to replace him. And it's Corey Boyd back in a tailback. And it's a flea flicker. Back to Mitchell. Looks downfield. Mo Brown. Jump ball. Intercepted by Willie Gaston. The flea flicker not only doesn't fool Gaston, he's in perfect position, and he turns over South Carolina. Willie Gaston never leaves his receiver, stays with him the entire way, even though it is a hard play action and a pitch back. Gaston stays with him inside out the foot. The ball's laid out there over top. He's got a chance, but the ball's just a little underthrown. Gaston makes the play on the ball, comes down with the interception. Well, the flea flicker takes more time. Exactly. So that allows the makeup time by Gaston to get back and in coverage. First interception thrown by Mitchell. So South Carolina holding on to a two-point lead, but Houston has the football back late in the third quarter. Oh, we don't get it, man. Gaston's interception gives Houston the ball at the one, not at the 20. Why, Doug? Because he maintains possession, he gains possession of the ball about the two. Contact is made, the foot comes down, the ball is still in the field of play before he gets to the end. Sometimes it's marked outside the goal line. It, it really protects you, that call right there against it being a safety. You know, that's why it's where the foot, foot comes down, the ball is still in the field of play. That's why it's marked out through this. They did look while we were away on the play, on replay, and it validated the call. Allrich to the outside off the pitch. He has a first down. Out to the 13-yard line. How about being in the shotgun, in your own end zone, and running the option? The zone read option. I think that's the best play in college football right now. Of course, you know, this isn't exactly uh, Darren McFadden going to quarterback taking a shotgun pitch here. A snap. True, but they were on their own one-yard line, so they have the space they need to operate right there. Great. <laughs> yeah, really, they had a whole yard. <laughs> Looks like you get a hand in the ball to Bowen. Oh, and Bowen could have run for 10 15. And the pitch is on Eldridge's back shoulder, too. Well, that missed snap circus ending to the last possession. And it didn't turn Houston into a very timid team as Art Bryles back to the ground once again. This time, it's Jackie Battle for 11 yards and a first down. Brought down by Fred Bennett. This is why Houston is able to throw the ball the way they do, because they are able to run the ball. They're in the dive option read thing. They run the ball up the middle with Battle. They get physical yards. And then they're still spreading out and doing their thing throwing the football. First and 10 Cougars at their own 24. 
A drive that started down inside their own two. And you can see balance so far for Houston tonight, at least in terms of the plays being called. Cobb back to the air. A bullet over the middle and a first down. Anthony Allridge turns into a receiver that time and picks up about 13 more yards. I mean, you know what this looks like? The receivers at Houston, their offense, it looks like it's starting out to be a vertical route, but then, and they get the defensive back turned and then a sprint, and then the receivers break it off on the end. Well, they've got so much speed and quickness. Both Aldridge and Marshall are small guys that have great change of direction and tremendous speed to get those DBs running and change direction on them. Byron Ely comes up with that last catch, and that takes us to the end of the third quarter. Only three points scored in the third quarter. So it's a two-point game going to the fourth. It has been a shootout in the Auto Zone Liberty Bowl so far. And we are just about set for the start of the fourth quarter. South Carolina with a two-point lead, but Houston has taken the ball from their own two-yard line and moved it all the way out to the 38. Kevin Cobb under pressure. Whips one to the near side and connects with Donnie Avery. And that catch will stand. And right now, let's check back in at our studio. Here's Reese Davis from the Sports Center 30 and 30 update. All right, guys, Tiger Woods skipping his second straight big time event. He'll miss the season opener Mercedes Benz Championship. Says he wants to stay on vacation a little bit longer. This event just for tour winners from the previous year. Mike Tyson was arrested and charged with felony cocaine possession outside a nightclub in Arizona last night. Sports Center after the game, ESPN News always on. All right, Reese, thanks very much. And what a game we have had here in Memphis. It's a two point game just underway in the fourth quarter. Second down and seven. Cobb off his back foot. The man was stumbling and could not make connection with Byron Ely. And it'll be third down and seven. The Houston Cougars under Kevin Cobb in 0-3 against Hawaii only scored 14 points in the second half they lost. And the 0-5 in the Fort Worth Bowl against Kansas they only scored three points. So, you know what, Cobb, they talked about it being a business game and a very meaningful game for this, this university. They want to win this game. They got to score points in the second half. There have only been three points so, scored so far in the second half between both teams. And Cobb faced with third down and seven. Four-man rush. Comes underneath. Tipped ball and complete. Intended for Mark Hafner, the tight end. Jasper Brinkley broke it up. And Houston will be forced to punt. I think they were really looking for a two-down territory there. I believe they were throwing the underneath ball there, looking for a fourth and short if they didn't make it and would have gone for it. A little delay were out there by the tight end release, and hoping that the defender, it was man-to-man -man coverage, usually delay routes aren't great for his man, and the defender did not leave his receiver. He stayed with him. i tell you, the adjustment the Cougars offense made down on the goal line, I thought they should have stuck with it, is the zone read option. Mix yeah. it up. I really do. It was working. <laughs> what he said. Kenny yeah. McKinley is back to deep to receive the punt from Justin Laird. And he calls for a fair catch and fields at his own 22-yard line. A reminder to vote for the Pontiac game-changing performance of the year. You can log on to ESPN.com, search Pontiac, and here are your choices. Well, out of the plays that have been shown. I really think that Oregon State play knocking down the two-point conversion, keeping USC out of the national championship game. At that point, they still went on to lose to UCLA as well, but at that point, knocked them out of the picture. That changed the whole landscape of the season, didn't it? it really the top did. five. It wasn't the most exciting play in the world. But it was a season-changing moment, no question. First and ten, Gamecocks at their own 22-yard line. Mitchell, play action. Scrambles, tucks it under, and runs for a few. Chased out of bounds by Brandon Brinkley after picking up four yards. Well, it is a momentum moment here. South Carolina's offense going back to the ground. I know they want to run the ball. They want to keep it away from Kevin Cobb. But Houston's defense, they made a play the last time. I think it's now up to South Carolina's offensive line to take over here for them. Yeah, take control, put it on the ground, and hammer it down their throat. I didn't think I would say this, guys, after the first half that we saw, but the next score in this game is a big one because things offensively have bogged down a bit here in the second half. A check down as Mitchell finds Corey Boyd, and Boyd 
squeezes his way to a first down out to the 35-yard line, a gain of nine. Just a nice little reaction versus home coverage, dumping it underneath to the back. Blake has not hurt himself. They did throw the interception on the flea flicker, but it was more of a punt than anything. It wasn't a play that absolutely killed him. And these type passes obviously are high percentage throws. You know, they're not going to mail it down the field. And I'm just waiting for one-on-one -on -one coverage with Rice before he does that. That's Rice going to the top of your screen. Kenny McKinley in the slot. Boyd the lone setback, two tight ends. He gets the call and finds a crease. Boyd to the outside. First down. Out across the 45 to the 46. Willie Gaston pushed it out. 11 more yards for Corey Boyd. The only way you have a chance as a running back to make these type of moves is to not have penetration. I mean, he's five yards downfield before he even sees the first defensive back come into the picture. Yeah, and all the receivers were locked up on their men. That allow you to get into the second level. I'll tell you what, South Carolina is starting to pound it away on first down, making good positive gains on every first down. What a good night it's been for Corey Boyd. Six and a half yards per carry and two touchdowns. First and ten, South Carolina nursing a two-point lead early in the fourth. Quick snap, and it's a draw up the middle, and Boyd spins his way to the Houston 47-yard line for a gain of seven more. It was a direct snap and a play fake from Blake Mitchell, and it seemed to freeze that Cougars front seven. Again, another seven-yard gain on first down. Hands it off, makes it look like it's a, a hit screen or something. Follows through with the motion just as a decoy. But South Carolina is running the football. They're running it very effectively on this drive. Second down and three. With two minutes gone by in the fourth quarter. Rice catches a hitch. And picks up another first down. Needed only four yards and got it. So, guys, it's a different kind of football game here in the second half than we certainly had in the first half. Well, you're, you're seeing right now both defenses have settled down a little bit, and they've made some adjustments out there. But I think a lot of it has to fall on the offensive. You know, so many times, Doug, when you have success like that, offensively you go to sleep. You know, you, you, you wasted that bullet in the first half. Now you don't have anything. You start to think everything's going to be easy yeah. is what it is. You, you start, you know, big chunks, 15, 20, and the way you get it is emotion, enthusiasm, execution. And it's sliding a little bit. Get back to what you do well. You know, whether it's the quick rhythm hit screen type passes, get it out of your hand, run that dive option we were talking about earlier. Do the things that you do well and stay with it. First and 10. So far, it's been the ground attack that has gone well for South Carolina on this drive. Sets up play action. Wide open at the 10-yard line. And walking into the end zone, Kenny McKinley, 43 yards. You run it, you run it. Fake the run, and all of a sudden, you get man coverage. Hammer, 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 play action. Deep crosser. Actually, I believe Rice was running an out on the left side of the field. Got the corner to bite on that. The receiver come up McKinley across the field. Gets across the safety space, and there's nobody home on the left side of the field. Deep. Here's what you're talking about. McKinley comes in motion, and I think he just kind of got lost in the muddle there. Coming across in motion, the safety in the back of the field there, number 21, Brandon Brinkley just didn't find McKinley as he came down the middle of the field. So the thought, though, was the corner on the left side of the field, and he jumped up on a route. So once you got across the safety space, there was nobody home. Kenny McKinley's fourth touchdown catch of the season. Second touchdown pass for Blake Mitchell. And Ryan Suckup's extra point makes it 37-28. Carolina on top. Tourists with cameras, somewhat inexplicable to well, us, show up to take pictures of them. Doug and I have had teammates who waddled into the elevators <laughs> late at night like that right there. Vincent Marshall with no chance as Ryan Sucka puts it out of the end of the out of the back of the end zone. What a life. <laughs> what a life. All off season they work out, get ready for it, and they have their moment. They're, they're in season. They're in you know what kind of duck that was? Absolutely not. It's a mallard. Atta boy. Yep. Yeah, you being the I'm hunter, gonna fisher. You. I got to get you down uh, to Texas, do a little hunting with Yeah, you. Get, your, get your shotgun out, dude. Well, you can bring your camera. You can enjoy nature. <laughs> Just come with us. So now it's back to Kevin Cobb. Trailing now 37-28. Approaching three minutes gone by in the fourth quarter. As this Houston offense putting up points at will in the first half. Have yet to score here in the second half. 
as Battle picks up about six yards. Well, one thing that I know for sure, Kevin Cobb one of these days has an invitation to go hunting with me. We were talking in our meeting today. Look at this nice 10-point buck. Kevin Cobb showed us with his cell phone, scored in the 140 range. Nice buck for him, very proud of it. We shared, we, we both exchanged camera photos of our recently acquired bucks. Is that what you call it? It's a recently buck. acquired? Yeah. <laughs> I'm be, sure that's what the buck would say, too. He'll be hanging on my wall here in about six months. Loose up the middle, Rashad Pope. A first down and then some out across the 42-yard line, a gain of 16 yards. As Benny would say, we, we got a loose cougar. <laughs> Scored in the 140 range, huh? Yeah, Boone and Crockett scoring system down there. You know, it's about 140 inches of oh. you know, total oh. length and mass, and there's a way that you measure the antlers. Gotcha. Yeah. But I've got Cobb beat. I, I had a 158 with a bow this year. So. Wow. Yeah. Well, a 158. Can't do better than that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's SAT score. <laughs> Cobb scrambles, trying to buy some time. And he'll buy some yards with his legs. Out of bounds at the 46-yard line, a gain of five. It'll be second down at five as Savelle Newton was there to run him out. Very important that South Carolina's defense not go to sleep. They've got to stay alert because we saw it happen right at the end of the second quarter. Cobb hits Vincent Marshall, who took it the distance right going in. We thought they may take a knee. Those two stats we just looked at, it's surprising that, that Houston is running the ball very effectively, 130 yards on the ground. We expected them to have all those yards in the passing game, but they've been well balanced all day. South Carolina hasn't given up a fourth quarter point in their last two games. As they are right now protecting a 37-28 lead. Roy Otis for a mild game. It will be third down and four. And as Craig mentioned earlier, Houston came to win this year. Being in the bowl, it's not the, the quest anymore. Now they need to win. It's a business trip. And they've got to, like you said before, they struggled in the second half of so their bowl games. And they've been struggling so far. They can't finish the drive yet in the second half. losing during the regular season of Southern Miss, beat Southern Miss in the championship game to win the conference title, and now the Cougars call their first time out here in the second half. Good call by Art Browse there. Get it right. This is an important drive for them here. Two down territory for them. They need points coming off this drive. Yeah, they're down two scores. There's 10 minutes to go. You can't waste the play anywhere along the way here. It's a third down and four crucial. Conversion. And I really like that little zone read option that we've seen them run a couple of times. It's not necessarily that Kevin Cobb's going to run it, but you've got a defense out there that's been spread all over the field today, and they're not right now used to locking in, making the quarterback keep the ball. So they get sprayed out out there, and he can hand it to the fullback or, or kick it to uh, Allridge on the outside. Let's check in with Todd Harris. And you know, you said it, Bob. When you come to Memphis, you got to go see the king in Graceland. And did you know the most collected stamp in the U.S. Postal Service? It's Elvis. 124 million. And I'm glad they went with the young Elvis instead of the older, fatter, mutton shop jumpsuit Elvis. This one's a much better look. And the two stamps that didn't make the top three list, hard to believe, but the Craig James Pony Express stamp did not make the list. The Doug Flutie Flutie Flakes, it did not make the list. Oh. Yeah. I'd actually like a copy of that you know picture what? if I could. I hate to say this, but Craig James looks a bit like the king, don't you think? I mean, no, I don't, he no, doesn't no, have that hair him. parted down the middle like Flutie did back in the day, but he, he's got the look. He is the king. He's just, the looker down in Texas. Just ask him. <laughs> Craig, being the king, that is today's Subway fresh fact. Shovel pass inside. Harry McDaniel, and that one was snuffed out on third down and four by the South Carolina defensive front. So it's fourth down and still about four yards to go. And you'd have to think the punting unit comes out now for Houston. I don't know. The way South Carolina drives the ball. I'm not sure I'd give it back to him. I think this yep. is a game here that you've come in. We've seen Art Browles go for it on fourth down twice already. Uh, I, I just think it's important that they keep the football. Points this on this drive. Absolute must conversion. Uh, you are kind of hanging the outcome of the game on this play. Fourth down and four. They're two for two on fourth down. And they won't get this one. Allridge brought down at the 
50, a gain of only three. And Houston turns the ball over on downs. Jasper Brinkley made the stop. Brinkley is all over the field. You know, it's 51 on the outside who makes the play. Casper Brinkley, 51, will not allow Allridge to get outside, which is exactly where Allridge has done his most damage with his speed getting outside. Great job, 51, turning him inside. And Jasper mirroring the running back, coming across, filling the lane on the outside, scraping around the corner. He doesn't miss. When he gets an opportunity to bring a guy down, he brings him down. And it appeared there was going to be a crease to get the first down. It looked like everything was pretty well blocked. It was going to be a crease. He shut it down just like that. Again, the Gamecocks still pitching a fourth quarter shutout that has now lasted two fourth quarters and into today's fourth quarter. First and ten from midfield. Mike Davis for four yards. And guys, just from a strategic standpoint, let's go back to that decision for a moment. And to, to me, it was kind of a first guess and saying, I really thought the punting unit was going to come out. Fourth and four, that's a tough number to try and get on the ground. But I think the answer is right here defensively. South Carolina, the way they've been moving the ball the last few possessions, have been grinding out the clock, moving the ball at will. You may not get more than two more possessions the rest of the game, so you move the score. If South Carolina takes it down the field here, it was the right decision. Second down and six. In plus territory again, the Gamecocks holding on to a nine point lead. Davis brought down two yard shot of the first down. Earlier in the game, we talked about Steve Spurrier's fun and gun offense and, and that Blake Mitchell was going to have to direct for him. We knew Kevin Cobb was going to have a nice game. But how about Mitchell? When you look at the performance he's had in this game, he's hung in there. He's gone the distance with Kevin Cobb, one of the more prolific passers in college football history. And so hats off to Blake Mitchell for not making mistakes and for scoring touchdowns. Great job. And a lot of his, his success is from pass protection and play action passes because of the running game. A huge play for the Houston defense. Here's a chance for them to get off the field. Third down and three. And they crowd the box. Back to throw Mitchell. Under some pressure. Wants the home run. Mitchell standing in there, had pressure in his face, the offensive lineman back in his lap. Hang in there, hang in there, put it up, and let your receiver make a play for you. And I thought McKinley looked inside from his wide receiver slot uh, position, and he looked at Mitchell, and he put his hands behind his back as if to tell him, hey, here's where we're going. I've got the fade. I can get uh, past this guy. And he came out, and he ran the route, and Mitchell knew where he was going to be. So unsportsmanlike conduct called against South Carolina for excessive celebration, which, which will be enforced on the kickoff. But with 7.39 to go in the fourth quarter, now the Gamecocks a point after away from taking a 44-28 lead. Four touchdown passes for Blake Mitchell. That is an AutoZone Liberty Bowl record. And the extra point is good. It's still a two-possession game, but a lot of work to do for Kevin Cobb as he has been outdueled so far tonight by Blake Mitchell with the help of Kenny McKinley. Those two have hooked up twice. Right now, it's the Houston Cougars and their fans that have the Blues. 44-28 South Carolina with a two-score lead. They're up by 16, 739 remaining in the fourth quarter and certainly this Houston offense is more than capable of scoring a couple of times in the last seven and a half minutes and again on sportsmanlike conduct called excessive celebration after the touchdown so here's Vincent Marshall and great field position at because of the 15 yard penalty as the return by Marshall out across the 40 yard line. How about the communication between quarterback and receiver on the touchdown? Well, I, I mentioned the hand signals. You look at the right side here, coming from behind with Mitchell. But outside wide, McKinley communicated back and said, hey, I got you, I hear you. And you're gonna see McKinley from the outside, watch him put his hand behind his hip there. Now what, something happens here that tells him I'm either gonna change my route or I'm going with the fade, but he was given a route option. They communicated each other, six points. 
the second hookup between those two. Now Vincent Marshall. He has been quiet so far in the second half, but he's into plus territory to the 42-yard line, a gain of 13 as we check in with Reese. All right, Bob, we got another game coming up, the Champ Sports Bowl. Purdue and Maryland. Purdue ready to boil her up. Get things going. Eight win team squaring off. It's coming up as soon as you guys are done. All right, Reese, thanks very much. So the Champ Sports Bowl is standing by. 7-14 to go in what has been a wild AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Bob Oshusen in for John Saunders. Here with Doug Flutie. Craig James, Todd Harris, and we've had a lot of fun for Memphis. Kevin Cobb dancing in the pocket, trying to buy some time down the sideline and complete. It'll be second down and 10 with 7 8 to play. The Houston receivers are having trouble shaking these defenders in man-to-man -man coverage now. They're not getting as loose as they were in the first, first half of the ball game. Cobb's having to hold on to the ball and move around. Houston is picking up the tempo. They're to be complete so they can huddle up, but they are in that two-minute tight mode where they got to score in a hurry. They're always in a hurry to score, though. <laughs> well, again, we put the graphic up earlier. They are now the nation's number one team in touchdown drives of two minutes or less. Trap hand off to Pope. And he is brought down after a gain of five at the 37-yard line of South Carolina. Brinkley on the stop. Cougars offense, they do need the big play strike to go in here, but, but more importantly, they need to get it in. You know, they've got to get to where they've got one possession game. you got to get that first score to give yourself an opportunity. Some Just make sure you get the points, get it in the end zone. They're going to need two two-point conversions. Big play here, third down and five. You have to figure it's four down territory for Houston with six and a half minutes to play. It's been four down territory at their own 30-yard line. Of course, it'll be four down territory. Not necessary, though. Donnie Avery picks up the first down to the 27. Little more sense of urgency here. You got to pick it up. They let the clock run on that last play. Got down to about 10-9 before they snap the ball. Well, they do get out of the college football clock stoppage after a first down to buy themselves a little bit more time. But, but again, the clock is now running. It's going again. As soon as they get them set, here we go. Now get your play in and let's get it. But a much more quiet second half than first half for Cobb. 230 yards in the first half and a little shy of 70 in the second half. First and 10. Looks to hitch one left. Has a man. Breaking free is Harvey at the 10. Curls his way down to about the three. It's first and goal. Savell Newton saved a touchdown. The way they set this up, the offense is just outstanding. You look away from it, it allows the, just a split moment for your receiver, Harvey, to get back to the inside. They didn't even use his offensive lineman getting out there. The linemen are too late getting out there. Harvey did it all on his own. That hurt. You know what? When you land like that, <laughs> he wanted to get in the end zone. First and goal at the three. They trap up the middle. Battle. Touchdown. Well, there's the quick strike we talked about, almost as if they were listening to the two of you up here. The pace picked up quickly into the end zone, and now a must two point conversion. Here it is, battle, great eyes. I really like the way this guy plays behind his shoulder pass, and the offensive line for Houston stepped up on that series to get him in the end zone. Tell you what, he scored easily, and like we said about him all day long, he's a fullback type downhill two, guy. So now the Cougars look to make it a one possession game with 5.42 to play. Trying to take the lead down to eight. Allridge the tailback. Three wide receivers. It's an option. Allrich in. Two-point conversion. And we have a one-possession game with 5.42 to play. The formation that they come up with here at University of Houston in short yardage goal line, you always have about five or six plays that you can go with. Allrich has the speed. Here's the option. Get the ball on the outside. Now can the Cougars defense step it up and get them the ball back? The question now at the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Can the Houston Cougars defense get a stop and give their offense a chance? It's a one-possession game with 5.42 to go, and we now have the second-highest Liberty Bowl scoring game 
in history. As a couple of years ago, Boise State and Louisville lit up the scoreboard at the tune of 84 points. We've got 80 on the board right now. Yeah, that's going down. What do you think, Craig? I think it's going down. I don't think you can keep these offenses. One of them's going back to the end zone. That's what we were saying. You almost want to try an onside kick. A low bouncing kick again. Just about handcuffed Pope. And he's out to about the 28-yard line. Again, a reminder, 5.33 to go in the fourth quarter. In case you're just joining us here in Memphis, we're at the AutoZone Liberty Bowl at Liberty Bowl Stadium. I'm Bob Wachus, and in for John Saunders, along with Craig James, Doug Flutie, Todd Harris. And so far tonight, four touchdown passes for one quarterback and three for the other. Not bad. Blake Mitchell and Kevin Cobb combining for seven scores, and they are standing by at the Champ Sports Bowl. Capital One Bowl Week continues right after we're done. We will take you immediately to Purdue and Maryland. And that game will be beginning about five minutes and 32 seconds from now. Now the pressure on the Cougar defense. On the outside. Doing a nice job of just milking the clock right there. Back to the ground and Corey Boyd. And a gain of about three yards, maybe four as he pushes the pile to the 33. I say defensively, commit to the run, sh try to shut it down, take some chances. If, if you can stop them, you're getting the ball back with a chance to tie. If you can't stop them, they score in a big strike. Who cares? We'll come back and score twice. The worst thing that can happen from a Houston standpoint is to see Carolina just eat up clock first down after first down after first down. Houston has only one timeout remaining. They just called a timeout with 5.03 to go in the fourth quarter. And I'm surprised that they would choose to take a timeout there. Well, maybe the fact that it goes to a, it's a second and six, a manageable down and distance here. They can't afford third, uh, third and short. So I'm sure Art Browse, if this is the case, is sitting there thinking, hey, look, let's let's regroup over here and let's talk about this defensively because we have to come out with a game plan. Uh, this has been a very exciting game, and Reese Davis is standing by in our studios. Reese? All right, Bob, after you guys finish the shootout, Sam Hollenbach will try to turn his season back around. He struggled last couple of games for the Terps. Maryland very capable in getting set to take on Purdue in the Champs Sports Bowl. Boilermakers and Terps coming up next. So Champs Sports Bowl is on deck, and who will be the champ of the AutoZone Liberty Bowl? We're about five and a half minutes or five minutes or so away from finding out. And this has been a game where, guys, we saw pinball-like numbers put up in the first half. Quieted down in the third quarter, but now in the fourth quarter, the offenses are back. There were a few turnovers mixed in there, not very many punts, and they haven't exactly, like you said, under control in the second half by the defenses. Uh, you got to get a lot of control right now of the University of Houston's defense. You know, they you got to gotta, you gotta get a little nutty here, and you got to get back in the backfield. Second down and six. Again, it's on the ground. This time, Mike Davis, a yard shy of a first down. So here comes a chance for Houston to get themselves off the field. Third down and a long one. You know, Houston there, went, they committed everyone to the run. They were one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside, no free safety, everybody up. And it's still a positive game getting into third and short situation. And Houston has just called their final timeout. I'm surprised that they would think they would need to use their timeouts with five minutes to go. I would think you'd... You'd be more worried about using your timeouts if you had given up a couple of first downs. But sometimes, you know, we watch a lot of football games. You see teams and, you, and the clock just chews away and grinds away. And the next thing you know, it's down to two minutes. And then you get into this real uh, hurry up emotional state on the, on the sideline. Well, my philosophy with timeouts is you use them when you know you're going to save the most amount of time. And it's after a run play, the clock's running. If it's if it's 25 seconds now, as opposed to later in the game, it's still going to all add up. But the trick is you always use them on defense and always use them when you can save the most amount of time. Because once they get the ball in their hands, they can control the clock with first downs and getting out of bounds. I like the idea, though, at this point here, you're able to talk about it defensively. Now, the last time, the last series, there was third and two, third and three. We saw what South Carolina did. A little hand gesture oh. from Mitchell to McKinley, touchdown. So, you, you know, you got to have that in the back of your mind. This is Steve Spurrier. He's not afraid to call anything at any time. 
South Carolina has not won a game in December since 1960. They've only played nine December games. December football used to not happen all that often in college. Third down and two. A chance for Houston to survive and a false start. Oh, they just picked up five free yards. As now third becomes third and seven. Well, that's huge. That's a big five yards. But I still say Spurrier's not going to be afraid to put the ball in the air. No, not, especially now. But the but but the defense is more apt to think pass right now. You know what? Third and short. I always enjoyed the offenses where our coordinator felt like you go on the same snap count. You don't trick yourself. Let's just go to the line of scrimmage and let's execute. I agree. I only I only mixed up the cadence when it was more than five or six yards, or if it was a ten and ten plus, where you tried to get yourself back in the down, not on short yardage. You don't mix the cadence. The Gamecocks 60 percent on third down. They've averaged 6.6 .6 yards to go. This is third and seven. Mitchell to throw. He'll tuck it under. Scramble, and he won't get there. Brought down a yard shy. <laughs> With 4.47 remaining, Rodney Rideau and Brandon Brinkley, or check that Ernest Miller, come up to combine on the stop. It's fourth down and one. Sidney Rice was on the right side, and I know that Mitchell was looking for him and wanted to go to him, but the Cougars' defense, the secondary, came up and made the play. They forced Mitchell into an alternative run. I think and Steve Spurrier just came out of the field, guys, and told the officials, we want a timeout when the game clock, or rather the play clock, gets down to one. So they can take the game clock all the way down inside of four minutes and five seconds to go. But you know what? Now you look at the Cougars and their timeouts and the strategy they took, it worked. It worked. It's, it's worked correct. for them. And Spurrier's going to stop the clock for them again. So, you know, at this point here, you have to say, hey, good job. It's not over. There's a fourth down coming. And Spurrier, Spurrier went for one against Clemson in the middle of the field on fourth down. He's done it all day today, or they've done it today. I'll buy you a, a chopped beef sandwich on Bill Street. And <laughs> okay. Over here. Deal. Even Steve Spurrier. I mean, Houston's here. been going for it on fourth down. Why not? Hey. Let's take a look at the season recap this year for South Carolina. And it has been one heck of a roller coaster as they end up at 7-5 and five on the year, 3-5, 5th in the SEC, won three of their first four out of the gate. Tough stretch, lost four of their next six, but again, every loss, all five to ranked opponents this season, and maybe the most painful of the entire year when they had a chance to beat Florida and had a game winning field goal blocked. Of course, first win at our drive of Clemson in quite a long time. So, South Carolina with many, many positives and certainly a few heartbreakers this season. I think this one here in this Auburn, you know, this tennis, all of them, you know, it, it just is a tough conference. And, and Spurrier recognizes that. And he knows that, again, he's got just a couple more players on either side of the ball that makes him a, a, a nine or ten win, ten win team. What are you, what are you shaking? Yeah, I'm what looking you down there. Who's coming on the field? Let's huh? see. Is this an offense to move? He hates punters and kickers. He went for it once earlier. I'm out of cheeseburger. A, a choppy sandwich on Bill Street. <laughs> South Carolina going for it on fourth and one. They run the play. It's Boyd. <laughs> he didn't get there. Oh, my goodness. Wade Cole comes up to lead the charge for Houston. <laughs> Steve's like, oh, this is going to be fun now. What the heck? Now you're giving them plus territory. The defense steps up, makes the play. There's a lot of pressure on that offensive line to come out and execute here. And you've got a defense that's in its ears back. Fourth down, ego, pride, everything's on the line. I disagree with you. Know, when they lined up, I thought for sure they were just going to bluff it, motion around a little bit, and fake mm. the cadence. Mm -hmm. and you can't show a defense less respect. And South Carolina just showed the Houston defense. And Houston comes up with a huge stop. Now Cobb to work. A one possession game, trying to buy some time. Gets tripped up and sacked. Casper Brinkley brings him down. That's a loss of nearly 15 yards, 13 officially. They're going for the big play there. They went with a pump fake and, and a double move on the outside. Nothing was there, nothing home. Went the in route, and now he's got a scramble. Nothing's there. Got to find a way to throw that away and avoid a sack. A 13-yard loss, second down. And 24.
Check that 23 shotgun set for Cobb. Just across midfield. Again flushed and throws it away. Third and 23. You know, they're, they're just not getting free downfield. It, it, you know, Cobb's taking his look, taking his first read, second read. He's not free. He maybe could have a quick slant there to Marshall. But in general, it, guys are not getting loose like he's expecting or he's looking to the opposite side of the field at that moment. Eric Norwood got a pressure on him there and forced him to flush out of the pocket. 2.59 remaining, third and 23. Oh, well, this is probably four down territory for Houston. They may not try and pick up the whole 23 here. Cobb comes underneath, behind his intended receiver, Donnie Avery incomplete. It's fourth and 23. Two minutes of... Two minutes and 53 seconds to go. Fourth and 23, and the game comes down to this for Houston. That was the play they were looking for. The ball was behind the receiver. If the ball is in front of him, as it was late in the second quarter, he hits to Marshall, he hits him running on stride, on pace, he's going. The chance of hitting the ball down the field like that deep is not as good. Fourth and 23. Here's number 17, Marshall. It's a four-man rush. Cobb. Well shy of a first down. And Houston turns it over on downs. I don't know if they were looking for a hook and lateral type of play here or what, but you got to get up the field a little further or at least be thinking pitch the ball if it's fourth down and you're short of the first. So how about Houston's defense comes up with a huge stop after they allowed, to this point, 44 points. And now Carolina's defense. South Carolina's group comes out. After allowing 36, they get the sack on first down, and they turn Houston over on down. And, and I'll tell you who has had one heck of a game. It was on first down. Casper Brinkley again. The defensive ends of South Carolina have not allowed Cobb to get outside to create extra time. And Eric Norwood, the freshman, got in there for a couple of pressures, forced them out of the pocket, thrown on the run. Uh, Norwood is just a phenomenal talent. They're just worried sometimes that he doesn't line up in the right place, but he gets after the Norwood, quarterback. Okay. Good defensive guy sometimes. They, they, know, they don't have all their pool sticks on the rack. Pool sticks on yeah. the rack. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Took the officials a long time to put the ball back in play. The play clock just began moving. <laughs> what were you looking for? Like, 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 you know, pull? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> pull stick. You didn't go Thank with you. me on that? I got you, no, You're thinking you're thinking about your chopped beef sandwich. There we go. He didn't Blake, get it though. Blake Mitchell lets the play clock roll down to three, and it's a pitch. Corey Boyd. And today's player of the game presented by Capital One is Blake Mitchell, quarterback for these Gamecocks of South Carolina. What a day. Four touchdowns, 323 yards passing. Just a phenomenal day. And the only interception there came on the flea flicker that he was just laying out there. It was like a 50-yard punt anyway that pinned Houston down on the one-yard line. He's made great decisions all day. you got to give a lot of credit to the offensive line and the run game and the play action. Well, he told us that Mitchell, he's really made a lot of progress, that he's coming on. You can see the light bulb, and that at times he really feels it, sees it. He's made some nice plays. South Carolina waits till the play clock gets down just about to zero before snapping and handing to Corey Boyd. 45 seconds to go, and they have yet to run the play clock, so they will have to run a fourth down play, or if you go for it, maybe he'll put it away this time. Are we going to punt? Hey, I want to remind you guys, there have been four touchdowns by the University of Houston today. Three under two minutes, one at two minutes and one second. This is a quick strike football team. Well, they're going to have to do it in one or two plays. Well, it looks like Steve Spurrier is out on the field and again once the timeout called, once the play clock gets down just about to zero. So they take the game clock all the way down to 12 seconds remaining. They will have to run a fourth down play and so one last bit of hope for Houston. And again, coming up next, Capital One Bowl Week continues. The Champ Sports Bowl, Purdue and Maryland begin in just a moment.
And Craig, there's actually a guy sitting in between us that knows about miracles happening in the last moments of games. Hey, there's 12 seconds to go, and what we've seen tonight so far between these two teams, who knows? It's always a possibility. You hit Marshall run and hit Aldridge run, and you never it know. Happen. It could happen. It could happen. You're the guy that you think every time a game's going on, <laughs> we can watch games anywhere, and you're expecting hey, something big, a Hail Mary. you got to think that way game. for it to happen. Well, it's you. And, I, and it could happen here, but uh, it's really been a heck of a game. For Steve Spurrier, this is one of those games. You know, he was like, you know, Craig and Doug, we, I'm trying to get to eight wins. You know, you know, last year we got seven. You know, we, we're trying to get to eight. Well, where do you think Steve Spurrier is realistically in – I guess the blueprint he probably laid out when he took over this program. Well, he's an eyelash away. I mean, you saw those scores against the top teams in the country, or top teams in the SEC anyway. He was right there with every single one of them, just a play or two away. The end of this season, this offensive line has come together. Blake Mitchell has got it going. They have the opportunity now to compete with the elite in the SEC. Well, I know he's very comfortable in his position at South Carolina to be going for it on fourth down. <laughs> down. <laughs> I said, you know, I wanted to say, I, I love the fact that both coaches did that and went after it. The punt away. Marshall looks for a return. Gets tripped up. Three seconds to go. Time for one more play for Houston. Yeah, that clock's going to start, though, on the change of possession. So well, they have to be ready they right at the line. Snapped. Here comes their offense hustling out to be ready once the ball is set for play then the game clock will roll. So they know they have to be instantaneously ready to get one more snap off. As soon as that umpire steps out of there, they usually say around three seconds, referee's going to give him the snap and let him go. And you wonder if Houston now turns it into Cal Stanford. Flags down at the line, procedure called, and that'll do it. Well, you know what? The ball was snapped before the clock ran out. Well, they may put one second back on there. So there should be a second yeah. on the clock, yeah. On the offense, number 64, that's a clock. We have one second on the clock. Which means as soon as the ball is ready for play, yeah, that one second will wind off. Houston has to be ready to run this one play. Just snap the ball on the official's whistle. All right, Bob, here comes the call of your life. <laughs> <laughs> to the near side, it's Marshall. And he's got players out in front. A safety defense is out there for South Carolina. They're waiting for Marshall to arrive where they have set up the wall. And that will do it. A wild AutoZone Liberty Bowl goes to South Carolina, the first time that Steve Spurrier has ever won a bowl game with the Gamecocks. We've had a great time. Thanks for joining us. Again, our final, 44-36, Carolina over Houston. Now, it's time to the Champ Sports Bowl. Here's Brad Nestle.